four into the end zone. A 49-yard touchdown to by Derek Rossi into the end zone. Touchdown, Long Island. 28 yards away. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Down, straight down the middle of the upright. Shields fires into the end zone for the touchdown. Stephen Gregory coming out. Has room down the sideline. Oh! the 36 yard line. Nunez for the first time and picked off by Jeff Getta. Getta down the sideline for a 67 yard return. There's one. Into the end zone. Touchdown. 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 You got to go hard or go home. We're going to bring it to him. We're going we gonna to show him what we made of. We welcome you to James M. Schuett Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University. It's the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge featuring the top high school seniors from Long Island against their counterparts from New York City. We welcome you to the broadcast booth. I'm Kenny Albert along with the guru of high school sports in the metropolitan area, Mike Quick. Mike, this is year nine of the Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge over the last eight years. Boomer Esiason and his staff have done such a terrific job. They have raised over a half million dollars for cystic fibrosis and Long Island football charities. Kenny, I'll tell you what, every year this game becomes more spectacular. Boomer during the week was out there looking at the players, but he was telling us he was so fired up about all the bunting he has out here, and he's got things in the end zone. This game takes on the atmosphere as if it was a college bowl game. The pomp and circumstance that goes into this game is a must for every kid who plays high school football in New York City and Long Island, trying to be able to get into this game and, and feel such a warm feeling about football and charities. It's, it's the perfect way to end your high school football career. And the players are so excited. They use the jet facilities during the week, practice out here at Hofstra, and it all culminates with the game tonight. Many of them have attended the game in past years, and now it's their opportunity. And Long Island, they are looking to win for the third consecutive year. They've won the last two, and Freeport quarterback Randy Mills had a terrific season. He'll be leading the way from Long Island. Kenny, he had a great career. Not a real big kid, but his numbers are the biggest in Nassau County history. Randy Mills with that right arm went up top this year 114 times through just one interception, but the biggest number, 3-0. 30 career, 30 seasonal touchdown passes, and that is a new Nassau County record. We spoke with Randy Mills, and he is excited about the All-Stars that he will be surrounded by here today. I definitely want to throw the ball. I have plenty of weapons. Uh, will Barrow, uh, Panecki from Holy Trinity, Vinny Trent from Floyd. It's, I have a lot of weapons on the field. Kenny, his biggest weapon, he didn't even talk about it, it's his teammate, Eric Rietmeyer from Freeport High School. These guys have been playing, throwing, and catching, and running around on football fields since seventh grade at, jo at Dodd Junior High School in Freeport. He threw 12 touchdown passes this year, over 700 yards of reception, 24 career touchdown passes off the right arm of Randy Mills to Rietmeyer. That is an unbelievable combination who we will get to see, and everybody here today will get to see for one final time lighting up field out on Long Island. And Mike, as far as the Long Island defense is concerned, uh, one of the tasks at hand for them in the game today, try and stop the leading rusher in the PSAL out of Tottenville High School, Jonathan Pitt Coombs. Kenny, nobody did it this year in 13 games. The big fella out of Staten Island's Tottenville High School led Jimmy Munson's group to a PSAL championship. They lined up 13 times, and 13 times they walked off with a W because of plays like that. The kid is electrifying. He's one of those hybrid runners. He can run it inside, he can run it out, Side, and when he's not running over you, he's running by you. 30 touchdowns this year, a school record. And close to 1,900 yards. We talked about his running style with Pitt Coombs. I try to do a little mix. Like, I understand the basis of it. Like, I always try to say, um, like, you cut, you cut um, linebackers and you run over corners. But, like, I try to live, like, I heard Bo Jackson say it. So I try to, like, image Bo Jackson, even though he's a whole lot faster than me and, like, quick for his size. But... I always try to like in myself as Bill Jackson. Well, we have highlighted many of the offensive stars. Will loves offense. Yet the final score in this game last year, Mike, Long Island won 7-6. to six. What do you look for today? Yeah, I'm glad I'm up here because I know I was on the sideline last year with Boomer, and he was all types of upset. I will tell you this. 
If you want scoring in this game and you're from Long Island, you better find number 70 on New York. Naheem Harris, just a big kid, 270 pounds. He has been killing his teammates all week, and now he wants to hit somebody from Long Island. So, Boomer, if he wants offense, you better tell his buddies out there on Long Island, find number 70. Well, will Long Island win for the third consecutive year, or is it the city's turn? It's the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. It's coming up next. Of course, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the handled the national anthem for years at Madison Square Garden. Nearly 100 high school stars from Long Island and New York City are here, and the real reason they play this game is not lost on the players. I want to be able to give something back in the end. I don't want it to all be for nothing, so the, it's, it's a great feeling to be able to help out less fortunate people with my gifts. It feels good because I, I feel like I'm doing my part, you know, because, you know, the community you know, they gave so much to me, you know, as a football player. And, you know, it's only right, you know, that now I come full circle, it's time to, you know, give back. I am very proud that my talent and, you know, the other talent of my teammates can bring in money for a good cause as that, you know, cystic fibrosis. And I, I'm, I'm just honored to say that I've played for, you know, not just for my own love of the game, but for a great cause. Cystic Fibrosis, Long Island Football Charities, and Hofstra University are all beneficiaries of the activities that have taken place all week long and the game tonight. It's the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. The opening kickoff is up next. I'd like to start. Cannon presents the Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge, sponsored by NFL Flag. The New York Jets. Anaconda Sports, Chiron, Aramark, and Under Armour. We are moments away from the opening kickoff. First, we send it down to the field, and one of our two sideline reporters joining us today, Deb Kaufman. Deb. Jimmy Munson is the head coach at Tottenville High School, the defending city champ, so he has the honor of coaching the New York City side. This is your second time around here. Do you feel more prepared this time? Yeah, I think I feel better prepared this time than I was last time. Uh, we did a couple of things different. I tried not to make the mistakes I made the first time, and we just went out and had nine good days of practice. Randy Mills on the other side, the quarterback for Long Island, had some quotes in the newspaper yesterday that there maybe was no chance they could lose. Yeah. Did that become bull, uh, bulletin board material for it, you? It became more than bulletin, uh, bull, bulletin board material. We put it in everybody helmets so when they got into the locker room they were able to read that article and uh, I had a guy call me up last night said we had to show up for the game whether we win or lose you know so you know New York City showed up and you know hopefully we'll see what we have for 60 minutes but I think we have a good shot to win all right thanks coach all right thank that's you. the New York City side for more let's go over to Carl Reuter he's on the Long Island side all right, Deb, with Russ Sellen, the coach of Long Island out of Freeport High School uh, this past year, the Long Island Class A champions. And Russ, this is a rematch three years ago. You and Jimmy Munson, you come out on top. So what do you do again to win this one? I don't know. It's, I think it's going to be a high-flying game. Jimmy and myself both kind of have the same type of offensive philosophy, so it should be something to see. How's the talent on your sidelines? You happy with the peer personnel that you have here? How could you not be? This is the best Long Island has to offer, and that's the best the city has to offer. It doesn't get better than that. Uh, you got one of your guys at quarterback, Randy Mills. You also have one of your wide receivers, 
Eric Rietmeyer. That could cause havoc in the secondary of the city. Well, they're certainly used to each other, but by no means are they the only two guys on the field. We got plenty of playmakers. Russ, good luck. Thanks a lot, Carl. All right, let's go back upstairs. Kenny Albert, Mike Quick, we're ready for the start of this one. The deep end for Long Island, number 22 is Will Barrow, number 86, Dominic Dixon. Victor DiRigo out of Port Richmond High School getting set to kick off for New York City. Had a tremendous year offensively as well. Was third in the PSAL with 28 receptions. He will kick it off for New York City. City won the toss, but elected to kick off and start the game on defense. This is Will Barrow takes it at the two-yard line for Long Island. And he is forced back. Wrapped up by Diego Okendo, number one, for the New York City squad. Okendo's a big-time player. That's Syracuse taking down Virginia, and here he is, the all-time leading touchdown passer in a single season in Nassau County, playing his last high school game, because next year when he heads off to Queens, to St. John's University, he will be a lacrosse player, Randy Mills. Now watch, there are going to be two quarterbacks on the field, though, on this play, Kenny. Watch Eddie Wanzer, Wanzer from Riverhead. They've been working on this thing all week. If it works, this is going to be in the end zone. Wanzer is number 10. Mills is number 12. So both quarterbacks on the Long Island roster on the field for the first play from scrimmage. Long Island starting with three wide receivers. First and 10 from their own 14-yard line following the 12-yard kickoff return by Will Barrow. And this is Wanzer getting set to throw. And he is taken down back at the three-yard line by Thomas Massey, number 85, out of Canarsie High School in Brooklyn. A loss on the play of 11 yards. Well, we talked about Naheem Harris in the open. Watch 70. He gets penetration up the middle. Wanzer has to go deeper. And there's the big fella, number 85, Thomas Massey, out of Canarsie. 6'3", 205 pounds. But right there, Naheem Harris, disruption up the middle, 270 pounds, and a play that could have gone for big yardage the other way, went for negative yardage, positive for New York. So Wanzer to the sidelines. Four wide receivers set for Long Island on second and long from the five-yard line. And they keep it on the ground looking to trick New York City as Obazawa Ahikira and Nicholas Tintel start the game in the backfield. And that was Tintel, Barrow, Reedmeyer, and Trent the wide receivers. Starting lineups brought to you by Chiron. Man to watch on the Long Island offensive line is their left tackle. He wears number 78, Rich Ornberger, and he's headed, Mike, to Penn State. Uh, he's the best player in this game, Kenny. He is a grave digger. He just buries people. Ahikira uh, in the backfield. Again, four wide receivers. Long Island has to get to the 19-yard line for a first down. Mills could not find anyone downfield. He scrambles, and then the shuttle pass is caught, and Riedmeyer was out of bounds at the 25-yard line, four yards shy of the marker. So Mills able to make something happen, but Riedmeyer stepped out. When you've been playing football together since seventh grade at Dodd Junior High in Freeport, you always know where your buddy is, and and there's Reitmeyer putting the arms up in the air and just turns it up the field, stepped out of bounds just before the marker. But that's a good job by two guys who always know where the other one is. So they opened up some room for the punter, Chris Lynch. This kid's impressive, Kenny. He's got a leg and a half. Back deep for New York City. Number one is Diego Okendo. Here's Lynch punting from his own 15-yard line. Okendo lets it bounce and then takes it at the 44. A return of five yards up to the 49-yard line tackled by T.J. Sonnenberg. So good field position for New York City following the 31-yard punt. They will begin from their own 49-yard line on uh, their first Offensive possession, Anwar Isaacs headed to Stony Brook out of Fort Hamilton High School, two-time All-City quarterback. He wears number two. And he has with him in the backfield, we talked about him in the open, Jonathan Pitt Coombs out of Tottenville. Officially first and 10 from midfield 
Four wide receivers, and the handoff goes to Pitt Coombs, looking for running room, turns the corner, and gains eight yards down to the 42-yard line. Forced out of bounds by Joe Finger. Second and two coming up for New York City. Their offensive starters brought to you by Chiron. Pitt Coombs along with Drew Williams in the backfield. Red and Lionel Suggs, the wideouts. The tight end is Lameek Black. And the men up front looking to protect their quarterback, Anwar Isaacs. That time, Jonathan had done the left tackle with a big play to get Pitt Coombs to the outside. Just locked up his guy and helped him get seven yards. Second down and two. New York City needing the 40-yard line for a first down. It's Pitt Coombs again. Has the first. And taken out of bounds off the fake. It was Isaacs who picked up the first down. Out at the 36-yard line. Forced out of bounds by Neverson Fun as we take a look at the Long Island defensive starters brought to you by Chiron. Michael High, left end out of Riverhead, had a terrific season with six sacks. And in the secondary, Finger and Stewart. The safeties, Stilato and Dunn, are the corners. Finger, the X Factor for East Islip High School this year, their all time leading scorer. He was terrific for Coach Champion. A first down for New York City from the Long Island 36. As the pitch goes to Josh Amaro. Stands five foot six, but he plays a lot taller. Well, he plays like he's about six two. And the last time he played on this field, his Monsignor Farrell team lost the city championship to St. Anthony 31-12. Amaro in that game, his second lowest rushing total of the year, 116 yards. But what he did in that game that was so impressive, when Matt Hahn, who should be playing for Long Island, but he's already off at Penn State, played some linebacker that day, he took Amaro and knocked his helmet clear to the sideline. And Josh just banged right up. This kid has got Fred Astaire feet. He's a dancer who's always going north-south. He's a player. Second down and four. Number 16, Brandon Gonzalez in the backfield. Four wide receivers and the handoff to Gonzalez up the middle. Gains about three, stopped a yard shy of the marker. So it will be third and short. Coming up for New York City, James Parker out of William Floyd High School in on the tackle. He's a mean dude, Parker. He transferred in from the state of Florida a few years back. And what a year he had this year for Coach Longo and the Colonials. They went a 10 0 in the regular season, won the Suffolk County Big School Champion and then got whacked by Freeport 40 to 7 in the Long Island Class 1 Championship. Freeport, of course, coached by Long Island's head coach in this game, Russ Sellen, who won his third county championship. Three wide receivers all split to the left. Third down and short. Isaacs takes it himself, reaches across. He lost the football, but he was ruled down. Ruled down by contact before fumbling. Isaac's just getting in there behind big number 73, Sean Caliccio from Zavarian. What a year Zavarian had for Coach Don Lorendi. Hey, why not jump inside behind the big 6'5", 305-pounder? He's going to play for UMass. Just needed a little more push by the big fella. Came up about a yard short. And Mike, as we saw on the replay, good call by the officials. His knee was down before he lost the football. New York City will go for it on fourth and inches. Pitt Coombs, the lone back. And he takes the handoff from Isaacs, picks up the first down for New York City, down to the 20-yard line. Michael Hine made the tackle along with Neverson Fun. Well, watch the beginning of this play when Pitt Coombs gets the handoff from Isaacs. He bobbles the football a little bit, then he's going to regroup, get in there, and just get up the line. And High from Riverhead coming back on the play. And impressive looking drive by New York. They're playing with purpose. Pitt Coombs gained 197 yards in the city championship. Takes the handoff from Isaacs and gains two down to the 19-yard line. New York City on their first oh, possession yeah, after their defense oh, held yeah. during the game's opening possession. And New York City's offense so far, Mike, looks impressive. Well, looking impressive on that play was Pierre Delva from Huntington, one of the few four-year starters in school history, and he was very impressive in practice this week. 6'1", 220 pounds, going to play for Bryant Collins. What a job Coach Collins does from CW Post, getting kids from the city in Long Island out there to play for him. But Delva's a good-looking kid. Bryant Collins has been a presence at practice all week. He's at the game tonight. 
Isaac's pass deflected and then intercepted. Ed Stellato with the pick for Long Island out of Lindenhurst High School. So after an impressive drive, New York City turns it over. The interception by the left quarterback, Stellato. Well, he's going to Dowling College next year. And first interception he's had all year, Kenny. He had a sack at 64 tackles on the season. And that surprises me because Andre Red, this week in practice, number 84, the intended receiver, who gets whacked on the comeback block here. Watch this. Watch 84. He misses the catch, and then he's just going to get whacked. Beautiful block there by Eddie Lascalzo. And I love that because he's going off to Sacred Heart next year, my alma mater. And Coach Buddy Krumenacker was saying this week in practice, nobody plays the game like Lascalzo, the kid from MacArthur High School. First turnover of the game. Long Island out, starting from their own six-yard line. And a handoff to Nicholas Tittle. And Tittle picks up the first down. There is a flag, however. Ball back in the offensive the backfield. Tintel forced out of bounds at the 21-yard line. He gained 15 as we check in with Carl Reuter. Carl? All right, Kenny, the man who comes up with the first play turnover of the play. game, Eddie Stellato for the Long Island team. And Eddie, that's a tough one to get because it's deflected. Concentration is key, isn't it? Yes, it is. Talk about what so far the scheme is defensively. They were driving there. And uh, what's going to be the best thing here for Long Island tonight? Uh, pretty much we don't want to give anything up deep, so we're playing back a little bit, hopefully to stop the run. Just don't want to give up any big plays. All right, go back, watch the offense. Maybe they can do something. Eddie Stilato, thanks very much. Thank Hold. you. All right, Kenny, Mike. 78 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat, first down. Rich Ornberger, the left tackle, was called for holding. And what about Carl, though, having the kids keep their hat on during the interview? He's afraid when they take their helmet off that they're going to steal the attention from him. He knows every kid on that sideline is a better-looking kid than himself. Come on, Carl, step up. Carl not wanting to get upstaged. <laughs> Here's Tintel, and he's just able to get out of the end zone. A fine defensive play by Kennedy Obang out of Columbus High School. Nearly able to come up with the tackle in the end zone for a safety. Three-year starter for Coach David Diaz. Didn't have any sacks this year. That wouldn't have been a sack. But, but a few years ago, a kid at Columbus High School, and I'm drawing a blank on his name, but almost tied a national record. Had six sacks in a game. Just one short of the national record. There's number 42, Kennedy Obank, 5'11", 200-pounder, 110 tackles for his career, three fumble recoveries. Getting to Morrisville next season. Now second down and 15. Coming out of the end zone, Charles Broomfield. Out to the 11 yard line. Gate of 10, Brian Ellis. Out of Sheepshead Bay, forced him out. Stopped about six yards shy of the marker. Six foot, 200 pounder, played at West Babylon High School, a two year starter. Another guy, Brian Collins from CW Post, would get when Coach Collins was watching practice this week, he was raving about Broomfield. 2,000 total yards this season for West Babylon. Looked impressive there. Third down and six coming up. We'll look at Rich Ornberger. He's a dude, Kenny. He's won every award possible. He's legit, an athlete at 6'3", 275 pounds. Three wide receivers set. Mills out of the shotgun. On uh, third down and six. Has time. Goes over the middle, and it's complete for a first down. Out at the 21-yard line to Rich Penicky out of Holy Trinity. He caught 53 passes this past season. And his 964 yards, the second best in CHSFL history in the semifinal loss to St. Anthony. He had himself a day and a half. 12 catches, 215 yards, and three touchdowns against the, the eventual city champs, but that's a good job. He runs great routes, Panicky does, and he's headed off to Stony Brook next year. Eight of eight yards, and the Long Island first down. They started this drive deep in their own territory following the interception. This is Tintel, looks to cut it to the outside. And is taken down, hit for a loss by Ryan Ellis out of Sheepshead Bay. No gain on the play. But although Ornberger has had a stellar high school career at East Meadow, 
is getting set to play at Penn State, and that's something he is certainly looking forward to. There's nothing better in the world to me than, than to play for Coach Paterno, and, and he just signed for another four years, he, you know, uh, so, you know, he, everything he said I, I was, was validated. You know, he wants a national championship. He wants to see this class do things that in, in, in this, you know, he said he wants a national cha championship in the millennium, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we can do that for him before he goes. On the screen, big tackle made by William Coriel well out of Susan Wagner High School. 103 solo tackles this year. When you're a solo tackle guy, you have a nose for the ball. Enough set on that play. They tried to set it up to Ornberger's side. You know, one of his future teammates, we talked about him before, Matt Hahn from St. Anthony High School. Over 30 touchdowns this year, second in the Catholic League in rushing. Just an unbelievable career. One of the great schoolboy careers on Long Island. They graduated so early, he already headed down to Penn State to take some classes and get a head start. Big Rich will follow him on July 15th. Third down and 10 for Long Island. They have to get to the 33 for a first down. Low snap. Mills looking. He airs it out. And it's nearly intercepted. Chris Mackery and a couple of his teammates all in the vicinity. Mackery could not hang on, but Long Island will be forced to punt. Well, if we can see that again, that play just broke down for one reason. About 250 reasons, actually. Ellsmore Gabriel from Christ the King High School gonna get that charge right up the middle. Here he comes, number 56, and right when Randy's about to release it, he gets that Clemson-bound arm up there. What an end of the year Gabriel had. He had six sacks in their final two playoff games. He was hurt a lot this year, but a lot of people like him. Lynch, a second punt taken by Andre Red. And he's forced out of bounds at the 39-yard line by Pierre Delva of Long Island. So again, New York City with terrific field position, a 32-yard punt and a 17-yard return by Red. And tack on 15 more, Kenny, because Pierre Delva stayed engaged and just drove him out of bounds. They're going to give him a 15-yard personal foul. This kid, Andre Red, we're going to hear from him. He made a catch in the back of the end zone in practice on Monday. If there were cameras out there and we had a chance to show it, it's a catch that you would talk about. One of those all-time great catches. And, and, and honestly, it's hard to describe. I know it's our job. There is no infraction on the play. First down, New York. Actually, that's a good job because Delva was engaged on about three yards off the white sideline marker, and he just stayed with him. Once you're on a guy, you don't know where the guy is. He's doing his job. A four-year starter, he goes out and makes tackles. That's a good job by the officials to eat the flag. Mike Aubrey Norris now in at quarterback for New York City. They start from the Long Island 37-yard line. Their second possession, and Pitt Coombs bottled up. First man in for Long Island was number 14, Jose Rodriguez. Well, Aubrey Norris hurt his groin in practice this week, and he's an athlete, six feet, 180 pounder from Port Richmond. Led them to the Staten Island School, Port Richmond is, led them to their best record since 1985. Gonna go off to prep school next year, Hargrave Military Academy. If the groin is good, this kid's exciting. When plays break down, he makes plays off breakdowns. He's a lot of fun to watch, Aubrey Norris. Second and 10 from the 37. Ball is loose, and it's recovered by Long Island. Stanley Gutierrez, number 54, the with play. the fumble recovery. Ball recovered by number 54. Gutierrez out of Freeport High School, and he will play right here at Hofstra. Won the Piner Award, the captain for Coach Sellen did, given to the best linebacker on Nassau County. Well, that's right on Norris. That snap was there. He just pulled out. And Gutierrez, following that great linebacker tradition for the Red Devils, Marlon Greenwood, Clifton Smith, Jerry Mackey, Eddie Gordon, all guys that won the Piner Award. He's the fifth for Coach Sellen in nine years. Penn State, they used to call linebacker youth. Freeport is linebacker high, no question about it. Second New York City turnover. Eddie Wanzer now in at quarterback. We saw him on that first play, and he is taken down. Wanzer sacked back at the 27-yard line by Eddie Thomas Wanzer. Massey. His second terrific defensive play in this first quarter. Yeah, and then he ruined it at the end because this New is a York. team football Thomas game, and he's showing himself off. You know what? Make the play. 
make the play. You've done it. Wanzer's in there. You come from the other side this time. Come on, Tom. You're better than that. Why are you showing off? You're all all-stars. We all know you can play. That's your job. Just make the play. And a look, Mike, at the quarterback, Wanzer. There's Thomas Massey. Wanzer won the Suffolk Championship at Riverhead. Headed to Hofstra, completed 67% of his passes during his senior season. Looks to take off, and he is sent back the other way by one of Mike's favorite players this week, Naheem Harris, as we check in with Deb Kaufman. Deb? Okay, Kenny, Pat Pizzarelli is the athletic director at Lawrence High School here on Long Island, but the other Pat Pizzarelli is playing for New York City. Do you find yourself in this situation a lot where your son is playing against the team you might have a rooting interest in? Well, this is the first time that's happened because he's went to Monsignor Farrell High School, which is in the Catholic League, and I'm a public school athletic director on Long Island. But I'm so proud that he's here because I've been involved with this game for about seven years as an administrator on the Long Island side. And he's come to the game when he was younger, and his, one of his goals was to make this game. And he had a great year, so he was chosen for the game, so it was great. All right now, how heated does the competition get between the two sides, considering there are plenty of ties? Well, you know what? Everyone's proud of where they come from. And, you know, Long Island, we're real proud. We think we have great football out here, as well as the city feel their football is good. But uh, hopefully we'll get three in a row this year. But we have to let him get back to the other sideline. He's in a little trouble at the moment. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks very much, Deb. Here's Arelli in on that last play. This first down reception by Will Barrow of Long Island. Well, this is the best athlete in the game, Will Barrow. He's a 4-4 kid who's going to give up football. This will be his last game to play lacrosse at the University of Virginia. I bet she plays football again someday. Wanzer pump fake, now rolling right, looking for Barrow again, and it's nearly intercepted. That's the second one Macari has dropped. I'll tell you what, won the leadership award this year for his high school football team at Canarsie. I don't know if he won the good hands award, though, for Coach Mike Cameron, D.C. He did have three interceptions this year and broke 14 up, but he could have already had two, Kenny. Mike, our Cannon Trivia Quiz. Which two former Empire Challenge All-Stars now play in the NFL? We'll give you some time to think about it. Wanzer takes off across midfield. Close to a first down at the New York City 44-yard line. Forced out of bounds by Diego Okendo. We'll see where they spot it. Kenny Wanzer has great feet, ran for just under 700 yards this year and eight touchdowns, 1,700 career rushing Come yards. Come to go to and He's another hey, guy. Hey, we're gonna go this will be his left. final high school football oh, oh, oh. game because he's going to play rich, lacrosse. Rich, a lot of those guys on Long Island do that. And there's Russ, of course, barking oh, right it out. All-star game, hey, regular hey. season game practice, doesn't matter. I thought Armbarger Ar was in. And we thank both head coaches for wearing a microphone for us during the game tonight. Wanzer did pick up the first down. Pitching it back, the ball is loose. And Ahikure falls on it. So Long Island will retain possession, some extracurricular activity back at the 48-yard line. You know what's great about this game? These guys don't like each other. I mean, this is a true rivalry. This isn't just one of those all-star games, okay, let's go out and play and have, there is a true dislike for each other. Mike, I know you know the answer, but. Uh, I only know one of them for sure. Just one? I, Which well, two former all-stars now play in the NFL? There you go. Okay, yeah, see, I, I, I was wrong with Fowler. I was thinking maybe they were going to try to sneak Clifton Smith in there, but I guess practice squad for the Redskins doesn't count. Moreland Greenwood's brother, yes. member of this year's Long Island squad. They want to turn it loose. Greenwood, I will. They want to turn it loose. We will turn it loose. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Staten Island is in the house. <laughs> Wanzer spun around, taken down at the 46 by Samaya Legrande. As time winds down in this first quarter here at James M. Stewart Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University. New York City turned the ball over twice in the first quarter. And we are scoreless. It's the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. We'll return with the second quarter after these messages.
We are set for quarter number two here at Hofstra. Kenny Albert with Mike Quick, Carl Reuter, and Deb Kaufman. Third down and 12. Wanzer looking downfield and the pass incomplete intended for Eric Riedmeyer. So Long Ball Island will punt for the third time today. Yes, Riedmeyer is everybody's favorite target. Runs good patterns. These Long Island kids, they do know how to run patterns. That is for darn sure. Henneke is, I watched him on tape this year. Chris Hardart, the athletic director over at Holy Trinity sent me tape and Henneke just looks phenomenal roots. He is a great get for Stony Brook. Great get. Rhett Meyer for CW Post. It seems like everybody this game is going for Brian Collins. Chris Lynch, the punter, had the snap get behind him. He still is able to get it away. What an effort by Lynch, who set it up to Albany. Taken by Red. And Andre Red out of bounds at the 21-yard line. What an athletic play by the punter, Mike Chris Lynch. Yeah, but what a bad play by the punter in the beginning. He has the mi mindset to get it off. The contact is allowed because the ball was dropped, and you can only rush four after the punter in this game. You can't send anybody. But Lynch does a good job. 36 and a half yard per kick this year, and uh, he got the right foot into that one pretty good. But that's why he's a punter and not a receiver. And he was able to get off his longest punt of the game, 35 yards longer than his prior two. Aubrey Norris remains in at quarterback for New York City. Starting from their own 21-yard line. Norris up the middle. Out to the 29, gain of eight. Setting up second down and two. As we send it down to Carl Reuter with two of the aforementioned NFL players who have played in the Empire Challenge in past years. Carl? You've got that right, Kenny. To my right is Mullen Greenwood, and to my left here we'll start with uh, Clifton Smith. And uh, Clifton, you like coming back here. And uh, Stanley Gutierrez out of Freeport High School picks up the uh, first fumble in this game. What's it like? Reminisce for me. Uh, well, this game is just uh, just about having a good time. It's your last high school game that you're going to play on Long Island. So just go out there, have fun, and, uh, make as many plays as you can so that when uh, down the line, when you're older, that you can reminisce, say that you had a good time this game, that you beat the city team. And uh, I mean, just just have a good memory. That's the, that's all it's, what it's all about. Before I get to more, let's talk about quickly Joe Gibbs, your head coach in Washington now. Uh, Joe Gibbs is a, is a real cool coach. I mean, um, I'm definitely glad that the coaching clan change happened. Uh, so far, he's bringing a lot of energy and a lot of new spirit to uh, the D.C. area. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. So. All right, speaking of spirit, Marlon Greenwood, Miami Dolphins. Your brother Kyle is out here. What's it like? You played in this game. Now you're watching your little brother. Yes, uh, it's always good to come back, and you know it's good to come, good to see that my uh, brother's out there playing. You know, it's playing defensive tackle. You know, I play linebacker, so it's a little bit different. Actually, defensive end and linebacker when I was in college, uh, when I was in high school. But it's always good to come back and support Long Island. You know, the, the, this is their last game in, in high school, and they give them a chance to uh, have a good opportunity to get a scholarship or some. Some guys, this is their last game, so they just have fun. Marlon, thanks for the time. Thank you very much. All right, Marlon Greenwood, Clifton Smith, back upstairs. All right, Carl, and uh, his brother, Kyle Greenwood, in on this last play as Norris fumbled. Greenwood was looking for the football. It was eventually fallen on top of by his teammate, Olavemi Otulaje. Uh, Kenny, you make that sound so good. 5'11", here's Greenwood getting held, dragged to the ground, no fall on the play, and then... Big Olubemi comes up with the fumble recovery. So both fumble recoveries today, courtesy of Freeport Red Devils. And Wilmer Esiason, of course, so instrumental in this Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. The Michael Brennan Spirit Award being presented here early in the second quarter. Are we allowed to vote? I want to make an on-air pitch right now for our buddy Larry Roth. The amount of work that he puts into this game every year on the TV side, I want to see Larry get that. 
And Mike, on the first play following the presentation by Boomer, Wanzer hits Reitmeyer 31 yards for a Long Island touchdown. But there is a flag holding against Long Island. It's coming back. Well, that's just one of those seam routes that Reitmeyer ran. He did it 12 times this year. That's where he lived. He lived in the deep seam, those long posts, and Wanzer found him. But this is coming back, boys. Steve Zimmer, the referee. Holding 78 off wow. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's the second flag thrown on Ornberger, who's heading to Penn State. Well, you know what, guys? Let's put an ISO on big 78. Let's see what he's doing, because sometimes when you're so... Oh, yeah, that's definitely... He engaged him when he pot, when he pancaked him at the end. That was legit. But he turned him and spun him. But here's Rietmeyer. He just lives in the seam, gets the drop in there. That's a beautiful throw by Wanzer. But they caught Ornberger for the second time. Line of scrimmage now, the 41-yard line. First down and 20. Wanzer rolling right, pass complete to Reitmeyer. Takes it up to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Brian Ellis. Let's go back to the touchdown that wasn't. Here's Ornberger right here. The big fella's jumping in right here. Okay, guys, roll the play and watch. He's going to get him, and he's going to right here. He's good. Now, freeze it right there. He turns him, and the end is fine, but he turned him too much. He got that right arm in there, got it under the shoulder pad, and turned him to the ground. I'm going to do a much better job on the Telestrator the next time. That was like kindergarten with crayons, those big, fat crayons. I did a terrible job there. It was horrible. He'll become a Telestrator veteran <laughs> in the second half. Wanzer on second and 14. Takes it down to the 26-yard line. Brian Ellis again in on the tackle for New York City. He's had a strong game out of Sheepshead Bay. So third down and six coming up for Long Island. You know, Wanzer, Coach Sellen was talking about him this week. There's Big Rich, 6'3", 280 pounds. Gained 50 pounds between his junior and senior year. This kid was a big-time lac lacrosse player, Kenny. Like, it seems like everybody on Long Island is. But he decided if he was going to get serious about football, he had to give up that sport and spend some time in the weight room. Runs a 4'8", 540. He's a big-time athlete. And uh, we'll hear some positives from Big Rich before this game is over, that's for sure. Only the third player in the last 25 years to win both the Martone and Thorpe Awards as the top lineman in Nassau County and the top player in the county. Low snap. Long Island keeps it on the ground with Tintel and Nicholas Tintel picks up the first down down to the 20-yard line. Tackle made by Diego Okendo. But Long Island able to move the chains. They've punted on their first three possessions while New York City has turned it over three times. Well, here you go. This time, Ornberger is going to get on his guy, and he just turns him. There's Massey. All right, there's a pancake. Off we go to IHOP. I'm back in this game, and I'm playing with purpose and Tintel. What a career he had for Coach Bobby Farron back at MacArthur. They won a Long Island title, uh, a Nassau title as a sophomore, as a junior. And this year ran for just over 2,000 yards, the third best single-season rushing mark in Nassau County history. Ahikure now in the backfield. Wanzer on first down, had it batted back. And then it was caught on the deflection by the center, Pipchinski. Would have been better off knocking the ball down. The center wants to get some catch. Julian Myers, the defensive lineman from Tottenville High School, 6'3", 230 pounds, getting that left paw up there. and. Headed off to Delaware State. Delaware State does a great job in getting Staten Island kids to head down I-95. They come in every year and it seems like they get a couple out of the island. Had Pipchinski knocked it down, would have been second and ten. Instead, he's credited with a reception, a loss of nine yards on the play. So now second and 19. Wanzer can't find anyone. He spun around, stays on his feet. He's way back at midfield. Down at the 28-yard line. 
after all that, Mike, a gain of one. That's one of the great one-yard runs you're ever going to see. But why does it start? Watch number 70. He's going to come up. If we get that from the end zone, you'll see Naheem Harris disrupted the whole thing in the middle. And then Myers couldn't get him. And Wanzer, he's got those dancer feet. He can fly this kid. You should have seen him in practice. He's a 4-5 guy. Here's Harris getting double teamed, just blasting his way through there, killing guys like he's been doing all week. There's Myers and there's Wanzer, the athleticism. I, you know, it, it blows me away. I mean, obviously, he's a great lacrosse player. To be all county on Long Island, you have to be. But this kid could play it at least the one double-A level next year. I'm not saying a quarterback, but he's an athlete. You could put him on the field, and he's going to make plays. Russ Sellin loved him, said, I wish I could take him with me to Freeport next year. You ran about 50 yards on that play and gained one. <laughs> Third down and 18. Launcher, end zone, touchdown. Wide open, Will Barrow out of Baldwin High School, 28 yards on third and 18. Long Island takes the lead. There's Naheem Harris coming off the field with a little hurt in his giddy up, but Will Barrow the touchdown. This is a kid who had a school record, 22 career interceptions. He's a big play guy. And here's Wanzer, Myers again, getting pressure. And this is what Wanzer does. He's a good guy on the roll. And number 10 came up on the play, Quadro Safajunkum, the cornerback out of Brooklyn Tech. He thought that Wanzer was going to run. He stepped up. Barrow got behind him. What you want in a minute, right? Chris Lynch adds the extra point. Long Island capitalizing on the third New York City turnover. 28 yards from Eddie Wanzer to Will Barrow. 9.15 to go, second quarter. Long Island leads 7-0. A touchdown of the game, Will Barrow out of Baldwin for Long Island, and uh, Will, we were just talking, Eddie Wanzer, boy, he threw a rope, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's got a great arm, and I, that's what we expect out of him. I talk about it, because you guys have some throwing quarterbacks, Randy Mills and, uh, and Ed Wanzer. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish here on this offense now tonight to try to get to the secondary here of uh, New York City? Well, early on, we were just filling them out, and we realized that their corners aren't that good. Their D-backs aren't that good, so we, we said, Every player, almost every player, we're going to try and work them. We're trying to, we're going to try and get deep on them every time, and it worked. You come off the sidelines over the touchdown, and who's waiting in the rail? Is your mom ready to snap a picture of you? She's a proud mom, isn't she? Yeah, my mom's my biggest fan. She's every game. She's wearing my jersey. She, she's actually pretty mad that I'm playing lacrosse in college instead of football, and this is her last game, so I'm happy I got her a touchdown. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And of course, Kenny, when he goes to the University of Virginia, he's going to pick up that lacrosse stick. So, hello, Charlottesville, for a different game, the big time game here on Long Island lacrosse. Will Barrow be turning that trick down in Virginia, back upstairs. All right, Carl, 28 yard touchdown reception on third down and 18. Jets sponsoring our scoring summary. Players from both teams using the Jets facilities all week long. Snap over the head of the quarterback, Anwar Isaacs. Looks to gain some of the yardage back and is forced out of bounds at the 14-yard line by Ed Stilato. Well, the old coach right across the street, Al Grove from Virginia, should call Will's mom and get him to play football because she's not the only one mad about that. Sean Caliccio, the center for Zavarian, headed off to UMass next year. Little high snap. Anwar Isaacs from Fort Hamilton at least turned it into something positive. It could have been a safety, but I'm 100% behind Will Barrow's mom, Kenny. That kid is electrifying, and I truly believe when those lacrosse, co when those football coaches down at Virginia, Al Grow, the head coach, his son Mike Grow, played at Randolph High School in New Jersey, and Al Golden, one of the best recruiters around, gonna work that kid and try to get him on the football field. Hand off to Andrew Jones, looked to take it up the middle, and was forced back by Maurice Baker out of Kellenberg. Here he goes, got taped up, 270 pounder, taping up that right ankle. Here on the play, spin move. And, well, I tell you, it was on the touchdown, and it looks like one of those turf things where you you lock in. This is your conventional Astro turf. This isn't that field stuff where there's not as much give on this as that field Third turf. Down. And it didn't look like he was engaged in any block or anybody stepped on it. But he's a poly prep kid and they're gamers and they'll be he'll be back. Third down and 16 now for New York City. They turn the ball over on their first three possessions. Pass is caught but 
well shy of a first down by Lionel Suggs. So New York City sending out the punting unit. Victor DiRigo will kick it away. Well, that play didn't work because of big number 90, Maurice Baker, the Kellenberg kid. Jimmy Munson's got to find a way to stop him. Five step, five step, five step. Watson chatting with quarterback Danny, Anwar Isaacs. Danny, get out of here. Danny, Fred get out of here. Snyder Danny, there from go. Sheepshead Bay won the city title in 2000. What a group he had there. Looks trying to find the right formula. Jimmy Bonanno from Bayside there, the former St. Francis prep standout. Kick by DiRigo. Fielded on a couple of hops by Rietmeyer. Tackled back at the 36-yard line. So Long Island with a 7-0 lead. Their head coach is Russ Sellen. An undefeated season at Freeport. Obviously special for Coach Sellen, but this year was extra memorable. It was an unbelievable season. Probably never happened again. Um, a great group of kids who were just driven to be as good as they can be. A lot of times you say that, but these kids truly were. Um, worked hard in the offseason, and it was just one of those teams where everybody kind of fit in the right place, and we really had no no holes. We, we were lucky enough to, to avoid injury, and it was just uh, really something to see. Kenny, that team was terrific. That Freeport team this year allowed just 35 points all season. Six of their 11 wins came via the shutout. They ended up number two in the Tri-State in our MSG Network poll. What a job. He knew off the season before that they were going to be special. You could see it in the preseason. You could see it how they opened the year with a 63 to nothing victory against Hempstead, and they just rolled from there. It took, I think, until week five, Massapequa. Is that where you went to high school? No. Where'd Not far, go? though. Port Washington. Okay, there you go. Took Massapequa two field goals to finally break the, the, the shutout streak. From the 35-yard line, Vinny Trent. First down and more. Down to the New York City 39-yard line. Trent out of William Floyd High School, a gain of 26 yards. Well, this is a kid who's played his first year of varsity football this year, and he had some giddy-up for Coach Paul Longo. 16 catches this year, 355 yards, seven touchdowns. And he's going to go to Nassau Community College next year, take his 5'11", 175-pound frame, and don't be surprised in a few years if he shows up at a Division I school because this kid was very, he was an impressive looking kid in practice. Your eyes kept going to number one across the street over at the Jets facility all during the week. Gain of 26 for Trent. Long Island now in New York City territory. First and 10 from the 39. Mills looking for power. Makes a one-handed grab at the 15. What a catch. Barrow may want to reconsider. Hey, hey, we got to get Carl to find Will's mom, and we got to get Will's mom on the sideline and tell her son, look, you keep your equipment. You got to go play at Virginia. And you got to love it. It's an all star game. Will Barrow smiling the whole thing down the sidelines, makes the great catch over a Division I player with a little push. Dwayne Davis, the kid from Columbia, headed off to Syracuse next year. That's an unbelievable catch. You know what? Whoa, was it a catch? Was it a catch? Did he have control? Hey, guys, I know it's an all-star game, and we don't want to be picky. Will Barrow on Russ Sellen's side here today. Long Island leading 7-0 on the move on the New York City 15-yard line. First and 10, three wide receivers. And again, they get the ball into the hands of Vinny Trent. Broke a couple of tackles oh, there. Yeah, yeah, down by Diego Okendo after a gain of two. Well, Mike, the players on both sides certainly appreciated the way they were treated here at Hofstra all week long. When I first walked in here last Friday, it was just like, wow, I made it to the big time. Seeing my name and my jerseys and then the rest of the team, like everything just is, it's a dream come true. Oh, that's exciting, especially when the first time when I walked in and I was like, dang, my lock is next to Santana Moss and then it's just exciting to, just to, to see that the atmosphere, like what they go through to get taped and all. It's just a good place to be. Practices, we had food after practice right there for us. They have the clothes we get, they wash them for us. We have the sneakers there, all brand new stuff, new helmets, new pads. It's, it's like playing in the NFL. 
Not exactly what the players have become accustomed to at their high schools, Mike. To the end zone, and the ball is dropped by Panicky. Good coverage by Chris Mackery, but uh, all the players we spoke to during the week just had these wide eyes when they walked into the Jets facility. Their name plates were put up on lockers with the actual Jet players. They Absolutely. were able to practice on the Jets' practice field. As Randy Mills said, we had food after practice. Oh, no question about it. And uh, Chris Mackery coming up there, getting a push on Penicky at the end. And, you know, I think a lot of people in high school football, when they talk about all-star games, as far as competition goes, everybody talks about the Big 33, Pennsylvania and Ohio. That game, while there might be better talent on the field, as we talked about in the Open, there is no high school game in America that rivals the Palm and circumstance of this game and the practices during the week. Mills looking on third down, throws off his back foot, and it's broken up in the end zone by Brian Ellis. He's been all over the field today for New York City. And Mike, I mentioned earlier, this is the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge, and we heard so many players this week, more so than in past years, talk about attending the game as youngsters. If they don't attend it, they've watched it on television, and, and every kid from New York City and Long Island aspires to play in this game. One of the Jets' top draft picks is on hand here tonight, and he's standing by with Deb Kaufman. Deb? Jonathan Vilma was drafted 12th overall by the New York Jets, so this is your new home. How are things going this summer? Uh, things are going real good this summer. I'm looking for a place to stay. I'm going to be staying in Long Island. Uh, practice went well. The mini camps went well, uh, and I'm enjoying it right now. How's Herm Edwards? How's everything going so far? Oh, he's a great coach. He reminds me of Coach Coker a lot. Uh, doesn't really say too much, or what he says he means, and he really likes to win. He's a great person on and off the field, and I like him a lot. What do you think of this deal that Boomer Esiason has put together? Oh, it's great. I haven't seen high school ball in, <laughs> i say, about 10 months. I've been excited. I love watching high school football, and it is everything that I expected. All right, well, welcome to New York. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks, Deb. Jonathan Vilma, one of the newest Jets. This is a 30-yard attempt. Lynch, season long. 45 and this one is wide to the left so Long Island's lead remains 7-0 late first half here at James M. Stewart Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University when we met you said you needed a dentist so Anwar Isaacs the quarterback the keeper on first down as we send it back downstairs to Deb Kaufman Deb Ron Duckseed is a joint venture partner for Outback Steakhouse, one of the big sponsors of the event tonight. How did you get together with Boomer Esiason on this? Um, to tell you the truth, I go through this every year. I'm driving my car one day, and all of a sudden he called me in my, on my cell phone, and I thought it was one of my friends playing a gag on me. And it was Boomer. He goes, no, Ron, it's me. And uh, we have this event. We'd like to know if you and Outback would like to uh, support us. And I said, sure. So it's grown so much every year. Can you believe how big it's gotten? You know, every year it's gotten larger and larger, and uh, his efforts and the efforts of his group, and certainly our Outbackers have done a tremendous job making it bigger and bigger every year. And the food gets better and better. You know, one thing I need to do every year, whenever he tells me 800, I got to prepare food for 1,000. I got to add 200 to whatever he says, but it's been great, and everyone appreciates it, and uh, it's got great people that come to this event. Well, we appreciated it, and they appreciate you as the presenting sponsor. Thanks. Thanks. All right, Outback Steakhouse, Ron Duxy, let's go back upstairs. Thanks, Dan. I'm not sure if uh, Ron took into account, Mike, that you would be eating at the pregame buffet. You know what? I, I, I get nervous before these games. I don't eat that much. It's probably one time I don't eat a lot. So you did not partake in a Blooming Onion? No, no. Boom looks like he got a little sauce on his shirt. She used a bib. <laughs> sure he could find a couple extra shirts here tonight. Man, big left-hander must have used the right hand tonight. And what a great job by Ron and his staff catering the, the pregame buffet. Anwar Isaacs still on his feet and then throws it out of bounds. Instead of taking the loss of yardage, it was wrapped up by James Parker, had the presence of mind to throw it out of bounds. Well, Parker, we talked about before, he's a dude, he's a stud. 6'5", 250, played at William Floyd, the Colonials this year, off to Nassau Community College next year. He's a 4 6 40 guy at defensive end, so when you go over to Nassau and you've got a frame like that, you've got some giddy up like that, some Division I school's gonna find you. 17 tackles for loss, 10 sacks this year. Mr. Isaacs had trouble getting away on that play. Isaacs one for three with an interception as he has split time 
Behind center with Aubrey Norris. New York City has had the better field position in the game today, but Jim Munson's squad has open. committed three turnovers. We have both guys open. We have yep. both guys open. Yeah, you sure do, Coach, but you don't have the time because big Mr. Parker is barreling down on your quarterback. On second and ten, over the middle, the catch is made by Andrew Jones. Gained him just one on the play, setting up third down and nine. Mike, ready for another Cannon trivia question? Yeah, I think Munch thinks he's Ferris Bueller, though, the way he plays <laughs> to the camera. Here it comes. Timeout. When? Long Island. Did the, the New third York City and final charge team timeout. Long Island Empire Challenge rivalry begin. Now, this is a bit of a trick question because if you tuned in right from the start, you know it's the ninth annual game, but not necessarily the ninth annual New York City Long Island matchup. So we'll give Guys, come over here. folks Go. at home a couple of minutes to think about it. I got to be honest, Kenny. When he pulled it away from just Here's Nassau versus Suffolk, I thought right, Boomer was nuts. I did not think that the New York fans would make their way out here the way they have. They've supported this game tremendously through, I'm not going to say how many years. Well, Mike, after an incredible season for Russ Sellen and his Freeport squad, coaching in this game is very special for Russ. Well, it's kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, this, I've been lucky enough to coach in this game uh, a few times, and it's always been a, a great experience. Boomer just treats the kids and the coaches top shelf, and it, it's a great experience. These kids feel like uh, you know, they're playing big-time college football or professional football right now, the way they're being treated. It's, it's really special. Russ Allen, six-time coach of the year, has won three county titles, 1997, 2000, and this past season. During his 18 years at Freeport, over 100 wins. Excited to get back. He was the National Football Foundation All-Metro Coach of the Year, the first time the NFF has put a team and a coaching staff like that together, and he was tremendously honored that night at the New York Athletic Club back on April 22nd. Four wide receivers set for New York City on third down and nine. Isaacs with loads of time, and the pass is complete over the middle to Andre Red, a first down and more, down to the 43-yard line. Gain of 24 on the play, and the New York City first down. Good job by Isaacs. He stayed in the pocket because Greenwood, number 53, is going to come right up the chute. And he stays in there, and Red just going to get in the seam right in the middle of the field, and then does his thing. Red, 23 receptions this past season for Bryce McKing. This pass caught by Lionel Suggs, who is sixth in the PSAL. 28 receptions for Lehman High School. Pierre Delva made the tackle. So New York City with a minute 21 remaining in the second quarter. They have one timeout, and they are on the move. Now on the Long Island 36-yard line. Mr. Suggs in his 6'3 frame helped Lehman High School, the Lions, win the New York City Volleyball Championship. He must be one heck of a spiker getting up there with those long arms. As always, Mike, you are chock full of information. Well, you know, Kenny, I am a big volleyball fan. Uh, <laughs> Played Sacred Heart? <laughs> no, Played I volleyball? Didn't. No. And a four down to the 32-yard line. Brandon Gonzalez setting up second down. And six. They do have a play where they give it to Suggs, and he throws it down the field. Number 80. New York City now in the hurry up with just over a minute remaining in the half. Isaacs down to the 27-yard line, brought down by James Parker. Well, Mike, as you mentioned, it started out as timeout. Nassau against New Suffolk the third and for the first team two timeout. years. We take you back to our Cannon Trivia Quiz in 96 and 97. Nassau and Suffolk got together in the Empire Challenge. 1998, the first year of the New York City Long Island rivalry. So this is the seventh season for New York City and Long Island. New York City used their Sometime final timeout. 56 seconds to play in the half. Long Island leading 7 0. The only scoring a 28 yard touchdown pass earlier this quarter from Eddie Wanzer to Will Barrow. 
Second down and five. Isaacs out of the shotgun. Isaacs throwing deep into the end zone, and it's broken up. Well, Anwar is a good student over there at Fort Hamilton High School, has an 85 grade point average. That time he should have gotten the first down and got out of bounds. He had a lot of real estate to run when he turned that left corner. And that time just kind of threw one up, hoping for something. But there was a lot more of the Long Island jerseys than New York. There you go. He's going to break contain, get to the outside. And he easily had real estate here, but he decided to just throw it up. There's still a lot of time left in this first half, 46 seconds. Pass was intended for Lamique Black in the far corner of the end zone. Now third down and five, four receiver set for New York City. Short drop, now rolling right, looking left. Can't find anyone, down he goes. Back at the 39-yard line, Michael Denemark in on the sack of Isaacs. Denmark, 14 sacks this season for Miller Place, heading right here to Hofstra. And what is Miller Place known for? Miller Place has the national record for most consecutive victories in any sport, over 500 for their badminton team. I was about to ask what sport they have that winning streak in. What a throw by Isaacs to the end zone for the touchdown. Lionel Suggs on fourth and ten from the 39-yard line. Well, that's his 22nd career touchdown grab. Played for one of the great guys in New York City, Carmine Colasanto. Little push-off here at the end. Maybe Mr. Suggs got away with it. Yeah, he did. They're not going to throw the flag, but he pushed Play off. Play resulted in a touchdown. John. There'll be one on time down for the extra point. See, here at the end, he pushes off on John Fargnoli, the kid from Garden City. He got some separation, got the touchdown, no flag. Big shot by Isaacs on the roll. He's an athlete and makes things happen. 13 touchdown passes this year, 34 for his career. Diarigo adds the extra point. Just ask Boomer size and the best moments That's in the football the are the touchdown half. passes. Now your kids can experience the same excitement Cut. in New York Jets NFL right. flag Listen leagues. Me. Just call 800-NFL-SNAP. So on the final play from scrimmage Take of the Take first half on fourth Take down and Take 10, Take in. New York City ties the score on the 39-yard touchdown pass from Anwar Isaacs to Lionel Suggs. Here's one yeah. more look. Yeah, and he got off. He got it off just at the end, and Mr. Suggs with the push, but he gets away with it. Touchdown, New York. Momentum into the locker room, and did you see the big left-hander in the bottom part of your screen? Smiling. Mr. Esiason got a big kick out of that. A couple of touchdown passes in the first half, and that is what he's been waiting for. So despite three first-half turnovers, New York City exits in a tie game, and their head coach is standing by with Deb Kaufman. A much happier head coach than he was about 20 seconds ago. Was there much of a decision to go for it on fourth down? Oh, no, yeah, we had to go for it on fourth down. We just ran four verticals, and Suggs made a great catch in the back of the end zone, make it 7-7. Seven seven. So, you know, we're still here. We got another second half to go. We turned the ball over a couple of times. We put our defense in a tough position, but they came up big uh, on a couple of plays. So. You know, we're still here. And a whole new ball game in the second half. We'll see you then. Yeah, you'll see me. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks, Deb. <laughs> He's great. He's great, Jimmy Munson. Well, just great for the game. His choice was to go forward or attempt a 56-yard field goal. I think he made the right decision. We are tied at seven. Speaking of sevens, coming up, the seven-on-seven seven NFL flag football championship game. Kenny Albert with Mike Quick. Mike, your thoughts on the first half? Kenny, New York was sloppy, plain and simple. They put the ball on the ground and in the hands of the other team three times in Long Island. They just didn't let New York get going until that final series. It was sloppy for New York. Ready for highlights? Let's do it. You know, finally, we got some highlights in the Boomer game in the first half. But unfortunately, for Boomer's sake, like it always does, this game starts out with defense. Long Island going with the razzle dazzle. The pitch pass to Eddie Wanzer doesn't have because Big Tom Massey is there for the sack. Then he gets Wanzer and lined up at cornerback that time from the backside. And then the 
Freeport contingent comes to life. Off the Aubrey Norris fumbles. Freeport, linebacker like they always do in this game, making plays. And then Wanzer. He's done this for Riverhead High School, the Suffolk County two champs all season long. Ran for just under 700 yards this year, 1,700 for his career. Has great feet, can burn you by the land, and he can burn you up top. Getting outside of Julian Myers here and letting it go. And there's Will Barrow, the talented senior from Baldwin High School, for the long touchdown. It was 7 nothing. But in the final seconds of the first half, New York would come to life. The kid from Fort Hamilton High School, the little magician, Anwar Isaacs, gets outside of contain just before James Parker gets him. Lionel Suggs from Lehman High School pulls it in as they headed off to the locker room. Ball even at 7. New York with Big Mo coming out to start the second half. You saw the highlights. Let's take a look at the numbers and the key number, Mike, the three turnovers on the New York City side. Well, that's it, Kenny. The turnovers in a game like this, in any football game, that's always the story. New York moved it the first series of the game, turned it over, and they moved it the last series. It was all that stuff in the middle of the Oreo cookie that didn't work. First half numbers brought to you by NFL Flag. The second half, just moments away. You're watching the NFL Flag Halftime Show, Long Island and New York City, tied at seven. We'll be back. Cannon presents the Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge, sponsored by NFL Flag. The New York Jets. Anaconda Sports, Chiron, Aramark, and Under Armour. Diego Okendo brings the second half kickoff out for New York City. And the return to the 44-yard line. Mike High finally brought him down, so again, terrific field position for New York City in this 7-7 game. The reason the game is tied, Lionel Suggs, touchdown reception on the final play of the first half on fourth down and 10. And now New York City on this possession will look to take their first lead of the game. Last time a kid from Staten Island took the ball deep in his own end zone and came out to the right side and had a lead blocker. That was Stephen Gregory from Curtis High School who's up at Syracuse now. Now Diego Akindo who will join Steve up at Syracuse next year with a long return. Setting up Danny Woodford from St. Pete's out on Staten Island. And Woodford with the handoff to Josh Amaro on first and 10. So New York City going with their third quarterback of the game following Anwar Isaacs and Aubrey Norris. Woodford now in at quarterback. Second down and nine coming up after the one yard pickup by Amaro. How strange it must have been for Danny to turn around and hand it to Amaro. They opened the season this year and Amaro was just unbelievable against St. Peter's. 27 carries, 219 yards and three touchdowns en route to becoming the first CHSFL rougher to rush it over 2,000 in the season. Penalty marker on second down. New York City had four wide receivers in the game. Well, you know, when you talk about all-star games, everybody wants to Ryan win and stuff, snap. but what you Full remember are the offense. plays, and there's Great been no play out. in the half. Just oh, putting oh, a hammer oh, oh, on the kicker for Long Island, and is it a legendary and play? Goes Gregory. It's kind of, when he comes around, you know, everyone's whispering, oh, you should have seen the block. Oh, you should have seen this. You know, and, you know, people starting to make up, you know, little parts of it. Like the helmet flew 10 yards and, you know, went up 20 feet in the air. But, you know, that was, you know, people like freshmen, they're freshmen that hear about it. And, they're, you know, I'm the next Marcus Wilson and things like that. You know, people, you know, a lot of, a lot of freshmen, at least I don't know, you know, trying to aim for this game so they can be the next Marcus Wilson, make that big block. A big fella, Marcus Wilson's down now. He's at Notre Dame. He's the backup runner to Ryan Grant out of Don Bosco. And during the halftime, I saw another poly kid, a kid who will play in this game next year, Paul Anderson, just a stud. A strong safety who earlier this week committed to Boston College. So once again, Craig Jacoby and Kevin Fontaine, they just continue to push him out of the Brooklyn school. Big time football, T.J. Hill. P.J. Hill, the running back, he's been offered by five schools. A lot of poly guys going on to bigger and better things. Four flags. Mike, you're starting early. You're ready promoting guys who will play in next year's game. Well, I'll tell you a couple other kids from Longwood High School. 
Donnie McCarthy, quarterback, 6'1", 195 pounds. He can really throw the football. They're going to be real good this year. Probably Prior won't to defend. the snap, false start. False start. That's not a big offense. one. We'll just keep talking over Five-yard penalty they, remains third down. They should probably win the Suffolk County Big School Championship again. They're going to have a tough game with Pat Chug Medford. Donnie will be here. A kid that you can mark it down right now. No surprise. Another Freeport kid, Leslie Jackman who was just terrific as a junior for head coach Russ Sellen. It's already been offered by Michigan State, Kansas State, Syracuse. So that's our early prognostication for next year. Nyan Botang from Lincoln High School will be here too. Pass caught out of bounds by Victor DiRigo. So New York City will punt it away. You know, a lot of people talk about Sebastian Telfair, the talented basketball player from Lincoln High School, went 13th overall in the NBA draft this year. He's not the best athlete in that school, folks. I can tell you, it is Nyan Botang who played basketball and football. He's one of the top 10 recruits in America. Every college in the country wants Mr. Botang, and I love it. And people have told him to stop playing football because they think he's going to be a pro in basketball. And he's just bucked the system like Leon Williams did for Canarsie a few years ago. I was about to ask you, which sport do you think he'll play in college, or will he try and play both? He may try to walk onto a basketball team, but he could be an NFL football player someday. And, you know, we saw Jonathan Vilma before. Leon Williams will fill his spot this year. Well, Mike, we've been talking about many of these players who will go on to play football in college, but for others, it's their last competitive football game. It means a lot to me because I, I watched this game so many times. I came with my father when I was a little boy because this has been going for about 10 years now. I, I think I've been to nine of the ten, and I, I'm proud to say that I'm playing in this game. It means a lot to play in this game. This is like one of the biggest games I've ever been able to play in, and like my brother playing this game, and I've been looking forward to play ever since I've seen him playing, and I see, see how big it was. It's such, I'm just excited to play in this game. We now pick up the game later in the third quarter. Now third down and three for New York City from the Long Island 11-yard line. Woodford looks to find a seam, and he has a first down down at the six-yard line, finally taken down by the aforementioned Tom Dedino. Yeah, and for the record, Troutwick didn't play football at Cary High School. No? No, Dedino's a tough guy. Troutwick, I, you know, he was probably already talking about it. Well, I know, I know he went on to become a, a ball boy for both the Nets and a stick boy for the Islanders across the street at the Nassau Coliseum. Ah, enough about Troutwick. What about Dedino? Last year as a junior against Mefflam High School, had 24 tackles in the game, and he was playing hurt. This is a kid who ran around in practice this week, did some real nice things. First player from Cary High School ever been selected to play in this game and the Governor's Bowl game, which will take place later this summer. First and goal from the six. Woodford to Diarico. But he is met immediately by Fagnoli. Gain of one on the play, down to the five-yard line. It will be second and goal for New York City. Well, this is a Staten Island drive. This is St. Peter's going to Port Richmond, St. Peter's coming back to Port Richmond. It's just a whole St. Peter's handing it off to Monsignor Farrell. Well, Mike, give your kids the opportunity to make the same great pass plays as these All-Stars by registering in an NFL Jets flag league this fall. Just call 800-NFL-SNAP. Second and goal from the five-yard line. And Pitt Coombs is bottled up. Roscalzo coming up from the strong safety position to wrap up the leading rusher in the PSAL this past season, Jonathan Pitt Coombs out of Tottenville. Well, Lascalzo, we talked about him before. He's a tough guy out of a strong safety position, a two-year starter for Coach Bobby Farron back at MacArthur High School. He was their general, their nickname, the generals, and he was their tough guy. 95 tackles, three sacks. And on the wrestling mat, just a big-time grappler, too. Two-time county champion in wrestling, school record for fumble recoveries in a season with six. And Buddy Krumenacker, a tough guy himself, he just loved Lascalzo in practice this week, just killing people. Third and goal. Woodford's pass is caught by Drew Williams, but he is forced out of bounds at the four-yard line. So it will be fourth and goal from the four. Mike, 
Looks like New York City will go for it on yeah, fourth down. You, you got to go for it because the big left-hander would probably run down on the field if they didn't. They tried to kick a field goal. The guy's been looking for offense for the last three years now. Uh, here he is. The former East Islip standout Time joining out. us in the booth. Timeout! And Jim Munson wants a timeout. Fourth and goal for New York City from the three-yard line in a 7-7 game. Dan Woodford is the quarterback. Here we go in motion. And the pitch to five foot six, Josh Amaro. And he's hit for a loss, but there is a flag. Flag on the field down at the four-yard line. And Amaro looks to be shaken up, Mike. Yeah, big James Parker came off the edge here, and Josh Amaro had nowhere to go. This was a kid, despite his size, he's never been injured. And there you see, there was just no give on the turf. And Michael High from Riverhead in there making plays, and, and you just don't want to see that. You know, we don't. We really haven't had many injuries over the years, and uh, we had an injury in practice, one injury in practice this week, and then and now this, and this is something that. You know, the game is so that, the, you know, the kids all have to stay up. There's no cutting. Illegal substitution on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down. You know, and the other thing, too, is, is that there's no blitzing. The defenses, that I'm sure you guys have alluded to, all have to line up. They, they can't be stunting and all this other kind of stuff because, you know, defense is about pursuit and passion. Uh, offense is about timing and working together. And uh, we try to make the rules such that the offense can have some success. Speaking of offense and high school football, Thanks to our producer, Larry Roth. Boomer, we take you back to your high school days. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that move, man. Still hurting him on the pump fake, Boom. You oh. had it back then. That game, I think, was against, this is against Brentwood Sonderling right here. When, I don't know if there's two schools out there still in Brentwood, but uh, we were down, I think, 30 to nothing at halftime, or 25 to nothing at halftime. I thought Sal Champion, my great high school coach, was going to kill us. And we exploded in the second half to, uh, for 35 points. Can you believe I remember that? Absolutely. I can remember games like it was yesterday. Well, because I know when I talk to you and Sims and stuff and other NFL guys, when you talk about high school, you guys always smile. And you, know, and you know why this game started? Why I started this game was because of my memories that I had from my 1979 high school all-star game, which was a north-south Suffolk County game. And, and I remember those times seeing those players that I had played against all those years and, and really made some great friendships, you know, during that time. Do you remember your stats from that game? <laughs> I think I threw four touchdown passes. I do remember that. You, you think or you know? I know. <laughs> well, Boomer has Bills. Let's one go. And it is nearly intercepted. And the catch was made by Rich Panicky. What a grab. Out at the 29-yard line. Gain of 23 yards. Mike and I both spent some time out here all week as we take one more look. And it seems like you have the most fun when you're out there on the practice field with the kids. Well, you know, a lot of these kids don't really remember who I was. <laughs> so I get behind center and I throw the ball a little bit. And uh, that's what you see Penneke right there. But, uh, it, you know, it's just great when they're respectful. And all of these kids, this, we've had a great group on both sides of the ball this year. They've been very respectful. They, I can't tell you how many kids have come up and really have learned about cystic fibrosis, the reason that we really play this game. And uh, that touches me because it makes me realize that, you know, not all 18-year-olds are dysfunctional. You know, that they actually are some thinking guys out there. And one of the great, <laughs> so when you were making some throws the other day, I, th I think the most important throws you were making were the gunner. And right. he's out there running around <laughs> on the practice field making catches because everybody always asks how Gunner's doing. So tell us, tell us. Time out. Well, he's 13 Long years out. old now, Mike. Their and first it's, charge uh, team it's really out. amazing uh, the, the things that he's been able to accomplish. He's a, plays four sports. He's not a great athlete. He's a good athlete. He's comfortable with who he is. Um, you know, he's a real fun kid. I know Sam's going to interview him here, I think, pretty soon. And you can hear for yourself just how great he is and, and how proud I am of him. And speaking of Deb, we sent it down to the sidelines. Well, there he is. Guess who's with Deb Kaufman? <laughs> Gunnar Esiason is with us. What have you been doing during the game? You're running the balls in and out? Yeah, I'm actually a ball boy right now with uh, a couple of my friends over there. So that's what I've basically been doing during the game. How cool is it that this event has become so big? Well, it started out small, I remember, and it just has grown so much, and it's so much better now, like, and there's so much stuff going on. And now to conclude the five boroughs instead of just Nassau and Southern. 
Now, it seems like your dad gets a lot out of it as well. I know the foundation benefits, the community benefits, but it seems like your dad enjoys it as much as anyone. Yeah, he does. Um, he has a lot of fun watching the high school uh, kids play. Um, and, you know, so they may have a chance going into the pros, so it's a good chance for them to actually show, show the stuff to some scouts if they come. <laughs> like that. What are you doing for the summer? Uh, I'm playing golf and uh, ice hockey. <laughs> so I heard you're a hockey guy. Yeah, that's my favorite sport. All right, so what, what are you? You're, you're not a goaltender, you're a forward, you're a defenseman. What's your deal? Uh, I play centerman. Okay. So that's my that's my position in hockey. How long have you been playing hockey? Uh, I started skating when I was like five, maybe. You have to get up early in the morning. Do you get ice time a lot of times early in the morning or late at uh, night? That was when I was younger. So now it's, it's better. It's a lot better now. All right, well, thanks so much for being with us, and thanks so much for all that you do to make this event possible. Oh, you're welcome. All right, he has a son that moved a father to move mountains, really, for this cause. Let's go back upstairs. Oh, All right, thanks, very Deb. Very nice, Deb. Thank you very much. I think Gunner's ready for a spot on the NFL today. <laughs> so is that my kid talking? Break it down the burrows? Not the kid that I have. Break it down the burrows and everything. I didn't even know he knew what five burrows was. That's unbelievable. And I guess Gunner was five when this game started back in 96. He, he was, and I remember my sister-in-law playing music underneath the stairs as it was raining because this stadium was under construction at that time. I said, oh, I don't know if we're doing the right thing here. Here's Mills letting one go, and this time it is picked off by Andrew Tate out of Cardinal Hayes High School. So Mike, after New York City committed three turnovers in the first half, Long Island has now turned the ball over twice in the second half. Well, in all actuality, in the first half, it should have been even with turnovers because New York dropped three interceptions. Finally, Tate gets one, his seventh interception of the year. He's going to stay out here on the island, come from the Bronx, and go out to Stony Brook. They won the Division A title this year in the Catholic League. There's three divisions, Triple Double and Single A, and they won the lower level Catholic League championship. Is he unbelievable with the knowledge? It's just, it's so great to have you up here to keep us all in tune with what's happening. An encyclopedia of He's, high school sports. He really is amazing, and, and Kenny, thanks to you, and also Carl, and of course Deb, and everybody else to put this game on like this. It's, uh, it, it takes a whole bunch of people to make it a success. I just want to say thank you to you guys and MSG for televising. Well, it's a great week and a great night. Now talk about the coaches and the time they put in. Oh, <laughs> listen, do we really want to get into the coaches right Everybody now? Everybody but Paterzo. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. Prior you know, when, we, when this was Full Nassau start. Suffolk. 84 offense. Five-yard penalty. When this was game was Nassau spot, Suffolk because I went to East High Slip, all the Nassau guys thought that I was favoring the Suffolk guys. And I told them I lived in Manhasset, which is Nassau now. So it was always back and forth, and there you go. This guy right here, he's a beauty. Let me tell you, he's a beauty. Oh, they're, they're great. They're, they're just great. But, you know, but now that I got to tell the New York City guys, yeah, I'm pulling for you too, but I just want to have a good quality game. And I know you told the story in the past, Boomer, as Andre Red makes the catch. I know Al Davis has brought the head coaches out to join the Raiders for a week in the yeah, past. It's, it's amazing. It, it, there's far-reaching people that support this thing. And Al Davis, who went to Erasmus, um, who's a, you know, a, a big supporter of, of high school football out in the Bay Area, I asked him, I said, would you mind if I send the, the two head coaches out to, to spend some time with you guys in training camp? He says, no, we'll fly them out. We'll put them up. We'll put them on our sideline for a, a preseason game. And he kind of wines and dines them. You know, they're out in Napa Valley. That's where they have their, uh, their training camp. So it's not a bad place to go. So uh, there's Jim. He's going to head out there this year, and he'll go with uh, Russ Ellen as they represent our, our game out there. And Al Davis has got to be, sorry, Kenny, Al Davis has got to be so happy because Danny Lamberg in his second year at Erasmus Hall this year took a program that was thrown apart three years ago. They didn't have a program. And this year he got him off to an 8 no start, one of the best turnaround stories in the tri-state. And Mr. Davis, I hope, has made a call to Danny Lamberg, a <laughs> young sure guy who coached under Jerry Kennedy in the uh, Jimmy, uh, Jerry Horowitz at Kennedy in the Bronx, and he's just turned it around, and it's such a nice thing. He's got a couple kids that'll play in this game next year. Absolutely. New York City on the move in a 7-7 game. Dan Woodford, the third quarterback of the game for New York City. On second down and nine, pass to the near side is dropped by Lameek Black. Setting up third down and nine. Now, although this is a game amongst the best, the city and the island have to offer it certainly is much more than that. Anytime you're involved in, in an organization that's going to help kids who are sick and kids that need help, it, it's just a pleasure to be in. And Boomer Sison 
for the past seven years has, has been unbelievable in the things that he's done for cystic fibrosis and for the kids of New York City. I've got seven kids on the team that came to this game when they were freshmen, and that was their goal. They wanted to be in this game because of what they saw when they were freshmen and, and, and the type of play and, and how they were treated. I mean, Boomer treats these kids from New York City and Long Island like they're, they're superstars. And, and he really, what he does for them is, is, is a great, great accomplishment to himself. And what he does for cystic fibrosis is, uh, is really special. And those seven have realized their dream tonight. The sack by Michael Denemark out of Miller Place High School. And of course, for more information on the Boomer Esiason Foundation, call 212-525-7777. Visit www.esiason.org. Would you like to give out your cell phone? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, but I will like to say this, and I'll leave you guys. Uh, thank you to everybody. We had an army of supporters uh, here today to, to make sure the stadium looked right. Outback Steakhouse has been terrific. Cannon's been terrific. Under Armour Nike. I mean, I, I can't say enough about the NFL, what they've done for you, for me and, and everybody else here. And then let me also tell you, the New York Jets and Black and Decker this year just went above and beyond as they do every year. But finally, you know, I have a friend who has a helicopter company, flies people in and out of the city all the time. He says, can I help you? I said, uh, yeah, sure, Mike. So Analar gets up in a helicopter. They, they circle the stadium, and they're taking, you know, you know aerial shots. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I going to do with these things? I don't know. But you know what? What it, what it just shows you is that there's so many people that are behind this. It's my name, and I'm very appreciative of all the nice things that everybody says. But I can't do this, and nobody can do this unless you have literally hundreds that really back it. And I just say thank you to everybody else, and you two especially. Well, you know what? That's very nice, but I want to put in a plug for some Lynn Vandenberg is phenomenal. <laughs> don't say that's going to happen. No, I don't, you know what? I don't care because I know you work her hard. The eligible but she receiver is downfield during oh, the thanks, kick. Thanks, Mike. Well, I'll let, you, I'll let her know you said that, but we're going to edit this out of the show. <laughs> Boomer, great job again. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Can you send Gunner up here? He was yeah, a lot yeah, better. Well, he's pretty good. <laughs> Boomer Sison, the reason we are all here today and have been for the last several years. It's the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. Victor DiRigo punting for New York City. And Will Barrow taken down at the 22-yard line as we remain tied at seven late in the third quarter. Barrow with the only touchdown of the game for Long Island. We welcome you back, 341 remaining. Third quarter. Eddie Wanzer in at quarterback for Long Island. Wanzer rolling right. And the throw incomplete. He was looking for the tight end out of Patchogue High School. Evan DeMeza. Eddie Wanzer now 4 of 7, 43 yards. And the one touchdown pass early in the second quarter to Will Barrow. Demez are going to go up to Western Connecticut next year. That was the first head coaching job at the collegiate ranks for Paul Pasqualoni, who gets so many of these kids from the city in Long Island up at Syracuse. And he takes some good grades up there, too, at 10.50 on the SAT. He's back. We told you those poly kids, they don't let injuries bother them. Naheem Harris just ripping up Broomfield on that play. They tried the inside little shuffle middle screen and Naheem Harris in there doing his thing and Naheem Harris has been making plays since day one this game was the opening game of the season for Polly against St. Joseph Philly who ended the year number three in the nation the only touchdown that day by the big fella bringing it back 70 yards as they lost that day 10 to 7 against St. Joseph Philly St. Joseph Philly beat teams by an average of 35 points a game and they just got by Polly that day Naheem Harris, Mike, also scored 13.50 on his SAT. Going to go to the Wharton School, study business. He's all business on the football field, that's for darn sure. That pass intended for Vinnie Trent. So Long Island sends out their punter, Chris Lynch. You know, you see those big old arms, they look like legs, and he's got those legs that are just undescribable, and just gets down there real low, gets that good push, and... You know, just, he's just a football player. There are some guys who are born to play the game. Naheem Harris was one of those guys who was born to play it. Had Lynch. 10 tackles against St. Anthony this year in a 41-21 win. Lynch averaging 33 yards on his three punts. 
Ball bobbled, dropped by Red. Takes it back out to the 42-yard line. 42-yard punt and a four-yard return. T.J. Sonnenberg on the tackle along with Eddie Stellato. Mike, you ready for another Cannon trivia question? Yeah, let's go. How many high school all-star football teams practice at NFL facilities? Both the Long Island and New York City squads have spent the last week practicing out here at Hofstra using the Jets facilities, the Jets locker room, the Jets practice field. Many of the Jet players have crossed paths with these guys working out during the offseason. Curtis great. Martin was on hand the other day. They all and they all talk to the guys too. It's not like they just blow in there and kind of hey kid get out of my way. And a lot of these guys were in the same position five six years ago. Yep. It wasn't that long ago that they were playing in high school all-star games. Aubrey Norris back in at quarterback. Wide receiver screen caught by Lionel Suggs who has the New York City touchdown on the last play from scrimmage of the first half. We bring you back to our Cannon trivia question. How many all-star football teams practice at NFL facilities? This is the only one. But it's actually two teams. That's right. Set set one you know, so facility. Think See, I think what they're doing here is I think they're setting Long Island up now because Suggs, they've worked on it all week. He's going to catch it and throw it. So maybe just kid him with a couple out here. They back off a little bit. Penalty marker as Cavell Gordon took the handoff from Aubrey Norris. Gordon third in the PSAL, just over 1,000 yards. You made a reference earlier, our referee Steve Zimmer, who's a longtime field judge in the NFL. He held the Nassau County record playing for Massapequa back in 1969, 22 touchdown passes in one season. That record broken this past season by Randy Mills, uh, Freeport with 30. And you knew it was coming because Mills had 19 as a junior and they had everybody back this year. So it was only a matter of time before Mr. Zimmer lost his record. Zimmer, an NFL field judge. All of the other officials in today's game are collegiate officials. And Zimmer, a former quarterback right here at Hofstra in the early 70s. Illegal defense. Man lined up outside by special rule in this game. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Penalty results in a first down. And a look at uh, Randy Mills. As Boomer mentioned, there are some rules that are different from the rules in college or the NFL put into place for this game specifically. Norris can't find anyone. Down he goes. Back at the 44 yard line. Jovan Jaravlia, 10 sacks this past year for Beth Page with the sack for Russ Sellins, Long Island squad. Plays for the New York State all-time leader in coaching victories, how he votes for the Golden Eagles, 29-3 in his three-year varsity career. Headed off to Springfield next year with his six foot, 250 pound frame. You mentioned longtime coaches, and hopefully, the former football coach at my high school, Shriver High School in Port Washington, is watching the game. Dan Bureau, who had great success back in the 60s and 70s. Also, one of my favorite teachers. How was that spot in there? Social studies teacher. For years. It always reminded me of Don Shuley. You kind of look like him. Okay. Longtime head football coach. Second down and 15, and then stretch by Suggs, who makes the catch, takes it down to the 43-yard line as we check in with Carl Reuter. Carl? Kenny standing next to Doug Goodwin, who's the MVP of the winning team here, 2000 on the Long Island sideline out of Holy Trinity High School in Hicksville, and then off the BC, and now playing the nose tackle position for the Baltimore Ravens, and Doug, I'm sure there's great memories to come back here. Oh, great, tremendous memories. Just, uh, just to see the fans and, and, and see the atmosphere hasn't changed. You know, it's each year this team, this event gets bigger and bigger. Most, more people coming out, more people are aware of it. And it's just a tremendous opportunity for these kids to showcase their talents for the coaches that they're going to play for next year. When you picked up the hardware as the MVP for the winning team back in 2000, did you ever think that uh, 
it would be off to a great college career and then of course now in the pros well you have to and for me it was definitely that challenge to say okay I created I, I finished one step now I got to create another legacy for myself in college which I did you know I had a great team in Washington College I had a great four years there um, tremendous opportunity to play ball at a high level oh, now I'm able to take that step and make it to the pros now one of my dreams yeah. continued success thank you Doug Goodwin back upstairs Kenny Albert all right Carl Goodwin named to the All Big East second team. He started every game oh, last yeah. season. That's the end of the Finished third quarter. Finished with two sacks, 17 quarterback hurries. No scoring in the third quarter. We head to the fourth. Will it be the final quarter of today's game? We are tied at seven. Fourth quarter here at Hofstra as Victor DiRigo punts it away for New York City. End over end taken by Will Barrow at the nine. And Barrow forced back by Brian Ellis. 11-12. Well, Russell and those fighting cystic fibrosis is paramount among the players and coaches involved in this game. It's a great experience for the kids. It's a, it's a great game and it serves a great purpose. Um, I think it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a great cause. We're raising a lot of money for it, and at the same time, uh, the kids in the game are benefiting, the coaches are benefiting, the coaches' programs are benefiting. So I think it's a win-win for all around, uh, everybody uh, involved. The Mike, is Gunnar Esaias and almost as tall as Boomer now? He's getting there. He is getting there, definitely. Gunnar was running some nice patterns of practice earlier this week. Nicholas Tintel picks up the first down and more out to the 34-yard line. He gains 22 on the play. A first down for Long Island. Tintel runner-up for the Thorpe Award. Rush for over 2,000 yards this season for MacArthur. And as you head into the fourth quarter, you start to wonder, will this be his final carry ever in football? Because when he heads off to North Carolina, he will do so to play lacrosse, one of the better lacrosse players in all of America. And what a high school career he had for the Generals. A Nassau County title as a junior and got them back to the championship game this year. This year against Hewlett, ran for over 300 yards and four touchdowns in one game. Over 3,000 yards in his career. A bit of a broken play in Wanger. Is taken down back at the 29-yard line by Kennedy Obank. Second big play, the Columbus graduated senior had in tonight's game before he heads off to Morrisville. 5'11, 200 pounds, three-year starter for Coach David Diaz up there in the Bronx. Loss of three on the play. Second down and 13. Early fourth quarter from Hofstra. Glad you've joined us, Kenny Albert, with Mike Quick, Carl Reuter. On the Long Island sidelines, Deb Kaufman on the New York City side. The ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge. We are tied at seven. Wadzer faked the handoff to Trent. Pass intended for a heat cure was incomplete. Third and 13 coming up, but first we set it down once again to Deb Kaufman. Diego Okendo is getting a breather uh, on the sidelines. What has this week been like for you? It been, oh, I got to go in, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it my question? <laughs> Way to go, Deb. Great job. Number six that offense. might be your first. Oh, Step that's down, great. Decline. Third down. And Deb, here, you know, Deb has a good see. relationship with Munson. and she could have said, just, hey, Jimmy, we're doing an interview. You know, you got other guys. You got 50 guys here. And Okendo has not checked into the game. He's walking along the sidelines. It may have been the question. You know, I did see Deb knocking back some of those onions out at the Outback pregame. <laughs> you know, you start to wonder if he's not in the game. Is it a breath thing? I never uh, saw an Islander player <laughs> do that to Deb. Following the first question. <laughs> Tight roping along the sidelines is Will Barrow. He's fun to watch, 4-4 four, four speed, but... But I tell you what, I love the fact that Deb is here tonight. You know what's nice? I've asked her through the years, and there's Diego coming back to talk to Deb, and oh, it's got to be Deb. It's got to be. But, you know, I've asked her numerous times, hey, why don't you come to a high school game with me? And probably about seven years ago, she was all set to come to a Thanksgiving Day game up in Connecticut. Uh, it's too cold. So I'm like, come on. But you know what? She blamed her friends in New Canaan, so we gave her the pass on that one. I'm surprised she didn't say it was too hot tonight. Charles Brookfield out to the 48-yard line. 
any chance, though, that one has to share the sidelines with Carl Reuter? How can you say no? I've tried for years. Diego is back with them. Okay, don't go anywhere this time. <laughs> one more time, what has the week been like for you? The week's been good. In fact, all the best kids in New York City, I, these, New York, these Long Island kids are big for no reason. <laughs> now, you haven't lost a game in a long time. Undefeated with Tottenville this year. When's the last time you lost a game? We lost in the Fugazi game. We lost to Queens. We lost by one point, but that was all these mis mistakes. That's all it really was. What are you looking forward to about going to Syracuse? I'm looking forward to just, just get on the field. I'm not looking for nothing big. I just want to go to go to school. I want to get out. I don't want to get out of New York City. Like, I want to be in a new environment. All right, be nice to the reporters up there. I plan on to. <laughs> Let's go back upstairs. Hey, Kenny, in, in the city final, the PSAL championship, way to go, Deb. Way to make them hang in there. Very strong. He was terrific. The game starts, Canarsie's back to punt, he blocks the punt, he picks it up, runs it in for a 21-yard touchdown. Later in the game, got away with an offensive pass interference, it was a 54-yard touchdown pass. And then with four minutes left in the game on a third and four, they were behind now, 24-21 against Canarsie, caught the four-yard touchdown. That game got him his scholarship to Syracuse. He was everywhere that day, out at Midwood Field in Brooklyn. And one of his teammates on this New York City squad, Dwayne Davis, out of Columbus, also heading up to Syracuse. That's a good job by that front line of the Tom Massey in there again. And 51, Kojo Katoy from Lincoln High School around the play, and Brian Tracy from Brooklyn Tech. These are all guys who you're going to see the surge up the middle. Unblocked is number 66. And that is... Man, where is 66? Is that 66? Maybe I'm G 56, all right. That's Ellsmore Gabriel from Christ the King going to Clemson. First Lynch, fifth punt. Good hang time. Red lets it bounce. And it is down inside the 20 at the 16 yard line. New York City back on offense. When we return to Hofstra, 10 and a half remaining. We remain tied at seven. If you have a mobility problem and pre-qualify for a power chair, we'll deliver a new hover. 10 for Long Island. They will start from their own 42-yard line in a 7-7 game. Both touchdowns coming back in the second quarter. Long Island took the... 7-0 lead, and then New York City tied it on the final play of the first half. Randy Mills back in at quarterback for Long Island. And the pass is caught by Will Barrow. Takes it up to the 49-yard line, gain of seven, setting up second down and three for Long Island. Well, I think you're going to see it in his hands a lot. Wouldn't be surprised if you maybe see a couple of reverses. I think he's Mr. Electrifying. He's Mr. Excitement. The Bruin from Baldwin High School. And got four catches for 80 yards already so he, the kid makes things happen and you don't have much time to get things going so give it to your best play eight and a half minutes remaining second and three out of the shotgun mills with the handoff and a first down a takes it inside the 40 to the 39 obazawa a out of west hempstead high school heading up to poughkeepsie and Maris. That's a great get for the Red Foxes. This kid, as I said before, he's a demolition derby guy. He's looking for collision. He plays in practice like he plays in the game. 1,800 yards and 18 touchdowns for West Hempstead High School this year and just running over people. And well, he that, that is a great get. I, I know that other bigger schools were looking at him and, and late he decided to go to Maris, but he, that's a good, good player for the Maris now. First and 10, 39 yard line. Ahikure again, and this time spins down to the 37. Eight of two, so it will be second down and eight. For Kendo and Leston Charles in on the tackle for New York City with seven and a half remaining. Another low-scoring affair. Boomer loves offense. Final score, Mike, last year, 7-6. And right now, this game tied at 7. Chalk another one up for the defensive units. Kids are too fast on the defense. 
And a combined five turnovers in the game as well. Out of the shotgun, Mills, second down and nine. There he is again, Will Barrow. Down to the 30. Brought down by Brian Ellis, who has had a tremendous game defensively, Mike, for New York City. Well, and you know, you kind of have to, and the safety has to stay in the middle of the field inside the hash marks. So what they're doing now is this is old backyard football now. They're hitting them short, hitting them short. Anytime now you're going to see a pump and go. Safety's not going to be able to get over, corner bites, and that thing should just, he should just walk it right into the end zone. And Mike, we should mention if this game is tied at the end of the fourth quarter, they will play overtime. In an overtime period, ball would start at the 25-yard line. Mills had trouble with the snap and falls on it back at the 31. So a loss of one on third down and one. Raheem Harris on him right away. No surprise there. You want to just run? You know what? You want to just run it? Uh, it's been working. Out the back door. Where's Bo? Where's Bo? Get Bo in there. Bo, Bo, run it. Even right, zone right. Get the first we go. We get the first. Hey, we could do that at an even if we get the first all nines. Well, they're going to give it to the six foot, 215 pounder from West Hempstead to see if he can pick up a yard and a half. You heard it from head coach Russ Sellen. Ahikure in the backfield. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. And the handoff to the big guy. First down up the middle. They needed two. And he gained seven. Three-year starter, 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns this year, over 3,200 yards for his career. And 30-yard touchdown. The old school of Don McPherson, West Hempstead High School, went up to Syracuse, did so many great things for Coach McPherson in the Orange. So a huge first down. So West is the inside receiver. For a heat cure as Long Island moves the chains on fourth down. And now Mills to the air. Going end zone, and it's broken up. Double coverage on Vinnie Trent. Corner came off, too. Corner came off. He's got to run out here. The kendo got back, caused some collision there in the end zone. Looked like uh, Dwayne Davis headed off to Syracuse from Columbus High School. Yeah, it was Davis who gave him the shot in the back that caused the separation. 6'1", 190-pounder, Columbus High School. Was terrific as a junior. Hurt a little bit this year, didn't play at full speed all the time. 96 tackles, 11 tackles for loss. Two sacks and three interceptions as an 11th grader for the Explorers. And he'll be heading to Syracuse with the other Akendo, Diego. Second down and 10. Mills, pump fake, goes the other way. Incomplete, intended for Nicholas Tintle out of the backfield. So the clock stops, 5.07 remaining. Third down and 10 coming up for Long Island. They have had such success on this drive, Mike, keeping the ball on the ground, yet they've put it in the air on both first and second down. 20. Now you got a big call no, here, Kenny, because close. you missed a field goal right from 30. So we got to get to like the 15, the 10? Yeah. No, 15 would be all right. What are you running here? I'm running a slant. I hope Willie. Really... Got to spread out. Widen out. Rich Bianconello, the it's, it's, it's head coach like... from Lindenhurst High School, the offensive coordinator. We're talking about field goal position here. Bad snap. That won't help. As far as field goal position is concerned. Oh, it's Thomas Massey again. That's uh, kind of like a, uh, okay, I'll take that sack. This is zone, hey, 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 hey. Even right, zone left, quick kick. Who's a, who's a back? Hey, hey. Charles, Charles. Give me a back. No, 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 no. Just tell Charles to block the right end. Tell Charles. Well, Randy Mills did this all week in practice. They would just work on the quick kick. Coach, I guess, would rather try to pin him deep and let his defense maybe steal one down there instead of throwing one up to the end zone, hoping for a miracle play or a flag. Mills is just going to pooch it down the field. Defense! Defense! Low snap. Mills will not be able to get the kick away, and then he is crushed by Jamile Legrande. 
So New York City will take over near midfield. We saw a couple of poor snaps, Mike, those last few plays. Grande making himself comfortable. He's going to play for Curtis High School Change next year. Three year uh, sorry, down. played for Curtis New High York School. City. This year, he's going to play at Hofstra next year. Ten sacks this year, 71 tackles for head coach Fred Oliveri, part of a city championship a couple of years ago as a sophomore. How much does an Eddie Wanzer go for? I'm not sure, but Mr. Wanzer better pay attention to the game because he may be back in there any moment now. I know both coaches talk to their kids at the end of practices saying, I don't want anybody up against the rail and talking. You got a football game to play. You can do all your talking after the game. On those last two plays, Mike, Long Island went backwards. They lose 23 yards on their last two offensive plays. New York City with Anwar Isaacs back in the game at quarterback. Starting from their own 45-yard line. Jonathan Pitt Coombs gained seven, but there is a flag. As we check in with 404 remaining once again with Deb Kaufman. Thank you, Kenny. Deborah Epstein is the Vice President for Corporate Communications for Canon USA, a presenting sponsor of this event. And why was it important for Canon to get involved in the Boomer Esiason Foundation? We now pick up the game later in the fourth quarter. Long Island will start from their 29. Dorigo did hit a big extra point against Bayside in the second in the first round of the playoffs to, to get them a 21-20 win. So, but it does favor Lynch in Long Island. A minute 51, 7-7 game. Fourth quarter. Mills, the inside handoff. Tintel. And Nicholas Tintel brings it out to the 36, a gain of seven. Pat Pizzarelli made the tackle, second down and three with just over a minute and a half remaining. Go, go, go! They all practiced hurry up, up during up. the week. Mills, pump fake, throws, looking for Vinnie Trent, but a little too much on it. Perfectly honest, I don't know what Diego Akendo was looking at there because he was coming up and Trent was just running by him. It's like baseball, you want to keep it in front of you now. Watch, watch the middle of the field. There's Okenda, he's on his back pedal. Oh, you know what he did? He read the wrong way, then he just got caught out on an island. A better throw, and that's a touchdown. Third down and three from the 36. Four wide receivers set. Mills takes off, has the first down. Out to the 43-yard line. A gain of seven on the play. So a new set of downs for Long Island with a minute 19 on the clock. Running a little bit. 15 rushing to touchdowns in his three-year varsity Deep. career quarterback. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Mills rolling right. Can't find anyone downfield. Taken out of bounds. Loss of a yard on the play. Forced out by Kennedy Obey. Sorry, Kenny. He's played well, too. He's been around the ball all day. Good pursuit there. Coming from his left side end position, staying with the play. Second down and 11 coming up from the 42. If the score remains tied, we will head to overtime. There's never been an overtime in the Empire Challenge over the first eight years. Pump fake, Mills throws, and it's picked off. Brian Ellis, who's had a tremendous game for New York City with the interception, and with 54 seconds remaining, the New York City offense will get another shot. Third, second half turnover committed by Long Island, matching the three New York City miscues in the first half. Well, this is a play that worked all season long for Freeport. Mills on the pump and then just look deep to the seam to Rettmeyer. Problem is, when you're playing against New York City, there's so many guys that can run with the play. And here's Rettmeyer, and it's just overthrown. And look at Ellis. Good field awareness, knew where the ball was, stayed with it. And as you said, Kenny, Time he out. has been everywhere. Brian Ellis from Sheepshead Bay High School. Going to play next year at out. UMass. And boy, what a day, what a night. He has had a strong safety with 4-5 speed. 
Take another look at it. Here you are, you're playing the secondary now. You're Diego Akindo out on the right corner and you're coming back and here's your strong safety dropping off in coverage and the ball overthrown to Rietmeyer. What a year, 98 tackles for Ellis, 13 tackles for loss, five sacks. His one interception this year, he returned for a touchdown. He should have two today, because he knows in that other end zone he should have picked one off. So he's got a whole bunch of tackles, pass deflection, pass interception. He's definitely making a play for an MVP in this game. A huge interception by Ellis with under a minute to go. There's three defensive linemen, you know they got two safeties, a short one and a deep one, okay? I blew it. I blew it. Should have let you kick that field goal. Should them kick that field goal. Now, which field goal is he talking about? I'm trying to figure. Tommy Pugh from Holy Cross. One of his kids just committed to Virginia, a 6'3 receiver. I got a call. I should have went for that field goal. I guess he was referring to one of the first half possessions when they wound up turning it over. Well, I tell you what, I, I, the only time I can think where Wait, they got guys, relatively the deep was on that first game? series hey, of the game. Hey, this is the fade guy, it's him, that's him. So with 54 seconds left. Well, I'm looking Andre Red, the kid's a playmaker for Christ the King, number 84. If you can get it to him, maybe you got a shot. Anwar Isaacs in at quarterback. Looks to escape from Denmark. He does. There's a flag. And the pass is caught by Lameek Black. Forced out of bounds at the 47-yard line. But remember, there was a flag on the play. Now 44 seconds up on the clock. Isaac's getting outside, breaking some tackles. Pitt Coombs trying to throw some blocks. Black with the catch, and then you see the flag come in late on the sideline. Here's referee Steve Zimmer. It's against New York City. Yeah, I know. I know. Good call. Illegal formation. Offense, the wide out covered the tight end. Yes, Five yes. yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Had to be a yard off the ball, the wide out. Had to keep the tight end. Hey, Fade! Fade! Line of scrimmage now, the 29 yard line. 44 seconds remaining in regulation. High snap gathered in by Isaacs. Airing it out. Pass was intended for Lionel Suggs. Now 37 seconds to play. Long Island, you heard discussing whether or not they should use some of their timeouts to stop the clock. They're gonna have one safety, no matter if they're playing free vent or not. They're playing well, now you got it. Now you have a decision to make. If you don't get a positive play here on second down. Right, they can only have one safety. Totally have to run the ball on third down. I'm looking inside for where everything is. chance a bad snap and give Lynch a chance to win this thing with just a little short field goal. So look, I don't think you look one, deep only have one safety. Time they can't out. play with two. Even in prevent, they can only have one safety. Bit. If nothing, right, well, they don't do get now. anything no. on this down. I think we've got to run it at 40. 42. Now second down and 15. <laughs> Incomplete. Pass was intended for Cavell Gordon. <laughs> down to 30 seconds. New York City now facing a third down at 15. Well, that was Isaac's fault. He just fired a worm burner in there. And I do like number four, James Parker, the kid from the defensive end from William Floyd High School. No, we didn't that take kid no time plays off. with that. We didn't take no time off this clock. We didn't take no time off this clock. Third down and 15 from the 29-yard line. New York City spreading the field. Four wide receivers set. And the pass is caught by Lameek Black. He has a first down. He lost the football. Who has it underneath the pile? Long Island. With 19 seconds remaining, Black had enough.
tough yardage for the first down. And the football knocked away from him. And Long Island recovers at the New York City 48. They need to gain about 25 to 30 yards, Mike, to get into field goal territory with only 19 seconds remaining. I'll tell you what, you want to make a gutsy call? Run a draw, call a timeout, and take a shot in the end zone. The draw is going to be open here because they're all looking past. You pick up 15, 18 yards on the draw. What do you think, Hal Sass, our statistician? And he wants her back in at quarterback from the 48-yard line. He has trouble with the snap. Picks it up and is taken down by Kojo Katoy. That's a big play by Katoy because Wanzer can get to the corner with his 4-5 speed. And he had some real estate if Mr. Katoy didn't shoelace him. But it hits the Willie. Quick out the Willie, right? Yeah. Something to that guy. Maybe we get lucky time out. breaks a time. But the third and final charge team timeout. Stay, stay with the stay, running back. Stay. The running, back to stay. Yeah. running back stays. So 10 seconds remaining. Ball at midfield. In a 7 7 game. Quarterback and have Tate go deep middle to the back side of the quarterback. So we got both streaks coming. You understand what I'm saying to you? Let Diego go deep to the front side. Let Tape go deep to the back side. Go deep to the front side. Tape go to the outside. Watch the outside. Left or right. You're, you're in the middle. But when the quarterback opens up, you go to the quarterback's face. Tape, you watch the backside vertical, okay? Tape, you watch the backside vertical. Hey, Mike, that's the way to go with it. If you can't play cover two, let's do it that way. But they get away with it. Talking to Mike Cammer, DC, the head coach from Canarsie. Remember, Wanzer in the Suffolk County Championship game against North Babylon took his team 70 yards with under a minute and a half left. And he put him in the end zone, so the kid is magical. Does he have it in his final high school drive? Lieutenant for Will Barrow. Three seconds off the clock. Now down to seven. Remember, in overtime, the ball will start at the 25-yard line. Hey, Tate, back up. Tate, you go that side. Diego, Diego, you go this side. Stay there. <laughs> Jeez, oh, man. <laughs> I got to have my head examined for coaching these games. <laughs> I got to have my head examined. Months is great. Watcher takes off. We are headed for overtime. There will be a coin toss. Ball will start at the 25, and a fumble or interception may that not be returned in overtime. There will be an NCAA overtime procedure to determine the winner. So we are tied at seven. Four quarters of the Bucks. Overtime coming up. Determine the outcome of the contest. The ball will be placed on the 25-yard line. The team that has the most points at the end of the series will be declared a winner. If you are tied at the end of the series, then we will do it again. The team that lost the option will have the option for offense or defense or the end of the field. You other visitors, uh, call the toss, heads or tails. You, you call it now and then I'll toss it. Tails, we call this tails. No, we messed up earlier. It is heads. You have the option to play at which end you want to play at. Take the ball or defense. Play defense. Long Island has won the choice. They will play defense first. Which end of the field do you want to play at? We will play at the south end, 25-yard line. Good luck, gentlemen. Well, Kenny, that's the right call. You win the toss. You want to make the other team come on the field first. For the simple reason, Let's Let's you have go. to decide if you want to kick the field goal or go, go for the touchdown. If hey, you score the touchdown, in. do you want to go for the extra go. point or do you want to go for two? Otherwise, on. when you come Let's out go. on the field and it's your turn, you just play reaction. Go, so that is the right call by Long Island, Kansas City overtime tiebreak. Folks, 
we could be in for a dandy because I think about 10 years ago, University of Rhode Island and Maine played a eight overtime Kansas City tiebreaker. I think it's the longest football game ever played. Now remember, a fumble or an interception may not be returned in overtime. New York City will get the ball first from the Long Island 25-yard line. And then Long Island will get their shot on offense. Dan Woodford comes in at quarterback for New York City. DiRigo and Suggs split out to the right. On first down, Pitt Coombs up the middle. Gain of five down to the Long Island 20-yard line, setting up second down and five. In New York City, they do play regular season overtime football. In Long Island, they don't. Postseason, of course, they do, but in regular season, so this is new for a lot of kids on Long Island, the whole overtime thing. Again, Diarigo and Suggs split to the right. Pitt Coombs, Michael Kelly are the backs. Woodford, pump fake, now throws, and it's off the fingertips of Diarigo. Remember, Diarigo is the place kicker, so should New York City get close enough, he would be the man who would attempt the field goal. He does have the flair for the dramatic in the quarterfinal victory in the postseason. He scored the touchdown to tie it and then the extra point to win it. So he does know how to come up big in a big spot. Andre Red has checked into the game for New York City. Third down and six. We are in overtime. Pitt Coombs. Picks up the first down. Well, there's the vision we talked about, the power. He hasn't gotten a lot of touches today. Starts left, cuts back, and runs over a guy. When you run for just under 1,900 yards, it's no fluke. And he's a big old kid who's going to head off to the University of Rhode Island. Here's the vision, cut it back. Good job. And he gets the eight yards, needed seven. And he got eight. And now they're definitely in field goal range. So you just don't want to make a mistake there. You want the touchdown, but you don't want to do anything stupid to mess up what could be Time a out. three points. Long Island. Timeout called by Long Island. Eight carries, 29 yards for Jonathan Pitt Coombs. None more important than that last carry. He picked up the first. Line of scrimmage now the Long Island 14-yard line. How we feel? How we feel? How we feel, coach? You like it? Diaz, you like it again? You like it again? How you feel? How you feel? How you feel? Let's go get it, baby. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Come on. This is the first one. Look at Paterzo. Just so intense. Dan Woodford, the third string quarterback for New York City, looking to lead them into the end zone here in overtime. Jim Munson spreading out the playing time. It is an all star game, giving Woodford a shot throwing, here in overtime. He's throwing it well today. First and 10 from the Long Island 14. Woodford to Suggs. Out of bounds at the 11, tackled by Ed Stellato. Suggs with the only touchdown of the game for New York City. It came on the final play of the second quarter. Second down and seven from the Long Island 11. No matter what happens during this possession, Long Island will get their chance starting from the New York City 25. Down to the four.
four-yard line, Cavell Gordon. So it would be a 23-yard field goal if they don't gain another yard on this next play. And DeRigo can more than blast it. You saw the extra point. He put it up on top of the football offices here at Rutgers, uh, Rutgers at Hofstra. Third down and two coming up. From the six yard line for New York City. Gordon, the lone back. Four receivers set. The quarterback, Dan Woodford. Red in motion. Gordon. And the question is, did he have enough momentum to pick up a first down? He's about a yard short. He'll kick it now. Ball spotted at the five, so this would be a 22-yard attempt for Diarigo. And a timeout is taken by New York City. Good. If it's number two, if it's number two, it's going to be sneak. If they change a the quarterback, put the line back now. he's allowed to move up on the heels. And all, they won't say anything. Steve, if we try to draw them off sides and they don't move and we get a delay a game, they can't decline it, can they? You can decline a distance always. They can decline it. Sure. No, no, field goal, field goal, field goal. They can decline it. Field goal. The whole point is just trying to get the first down, draw them off. Who cares if they take the five yards or not? The whole point is just to it. get your we were first down. Right, right. They can decline it. it. Doesn't matter, Jimmy. No, no. Take it. Oh. Victor DiRigo in to attempt the field goal. A 22-yard attempt. Which would give New York City a 10-7 lead. Long Island would then Start from the 25-yard line. We are in overtime. Bad job by New York. Personnel, get two guys not out on the field. They practiced it all week, and now the biggest moment, they're all discombobulated. Aubrey Norris is the holder. They can, decline. They can only run rush six guys. They can only run six. And they can't run off the edge. The kick by DiRigo is good. So New York City. Out on top now by the score of 10 to 7. We were trying to go, try to draw more sides with a delay of game. They can decline that. Right, right, right. So that's what I wanted to make sure before we called that, that they decline it and that way we don't get no. Thank you. No, that, that, I, Muntz isn't getting the point. The point isn't what happens if they take the penalty. The point is if they jump off sides, you're going to get the first down. You get a chance. You get four downs to go three yards now. He was thinking about B, not A. Exactly. But his team does have the lead. If their defense holds, they win the game. Long Island could tie the score with a field goal or win it with a touchdown. They needed a long yard. Had they jumped off sides, Long Island, they would have gotten two and a half. It would have been a first goal from the two and a half yard line. So now it's Long Island's turn. Eddie Wanzer is the quarterback. The handoff to Nicholas Tintle, and he's tackled by Keith Okendo. He's got some closing speed, huh, Kenny? Coming up there, number 90, six foot, 185 pounder, going to Morrisville. 80 tackles this year for the city champs. Keith Okendo's had a strong second half and a good start here in overtime. Second down and 10 from the 25. Movement on the line. Prior to the snap, false start, 78 offense, five yards from the previous spot, remains first down. That's Ornberger's third penalty of the game. Correction, second down. 
So a second down at 15. Long Island losing a big five yards on the penalty. Line of scrimmage now the 30 of New York City. Wanzer. And the catch is made by Will Barrow. At the seven-yard line, a 23-yard pass play from Wanzer to Barrow, who's had a tremendous game tonight for Long Island. Well, that's a sixth catch, and he's well over 100 yards now. Here he goes up with double coverage and just gets it. A great athlete. Six for 111. Of course, the touchdown, their only score of the game. So Long Island now obviously in field goal range for Chris Lynch. But a chance to win the game for Russ Sellen. First and goal from the seven. It's wrong. Well, I'd just feed the big fella, Obi from West Hempstead. If he's in there, is 23 out there? That's a penalty! That's a penalty! Long Island tried to call a timeout. They didn't have any left. Although it does say two up on the scoreboard. First and goal from the seven. There is a penalty flag. Watch it to the end zone. Touchdown. Rich Penicky, but the question is, which team is the flag against? It's against Long Island. It's coming back. Illegal formation, offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. Well, here you go. Here's the guy right here that shouldn't have been there. They said they were running special and they just had too many guys on the line of scrimmage. And you see Penicky, and it was Penicky because he dragged across the field. He should have been in the slot. He dragged across. They were about a half yard off from winning this football game. So it pushes Long Island back to the 12-yard line. First and goal. Off the play fake. Wanzer looking end zone. He throws, and it's dropped. T.J. Sonnenberg, the intended receiver out of North Babylon. And Stephen Morrison, the linebacker from Christ the King, number five, is so upset because he deflected it a little bit, but he thought he could have had the pick. Here's number five. He goes up right through his hands, got just a little bit on it. And then Sonnenberg, who was just tremendous in his final high school game, that 32-28 loss to Riverhead when he ran for 130 yards and a touchdown, just enough by Morrison to distract him. Game-winning touchdown went right through his hands. Now second and goal from the 12. Wands are out of the shotgun. And down he goes. Penalty marker. Wands are down back at the 20-yard line. Once again, LaGrande coming in big. To hold on Long Island, you heard the chatter from the coaches on the New York City side. Sounds like they might decline it in order to uh, not give Long Island another down, but you would think they'd want to take the negative yardage, Mike. Well, here you see the takedown, Kenny. They're just bringing, you know, Pogan is just bringing down Naeem Harris. 74 offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Yeah, they have to take the penalty. Down. Take them out of field goal range. You heard the initial chatter. We took it. We took it. They talked about took, declining it, but you can't decline it. Well, you know, but you have to think about it, too, because they get the down back. Yeah, but 10 yards. No, but, but you do get the down back. No, I know. It's I know that. It's one of those that. things that you, you do. But you want them on the 12-yard line, which is a 29-yard field goal. This is you right now. the 22-yard line, which is a 39-yard field goal. Right. It's not. It, it's the right call. It's not just. It, it's not one of those no-brainer. No, I know it's not an easy decision, but I think you have to force them back 10 yards. Oh, absolutely. But you do have to think about that one just a little bit. On second and goal, Wanzer's pass is short. Long Island wanted a flag. 
Will Farrow thought he was interfered with by Dwayne Davis. Well, 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 let's see if Dwayne Davis, it might not be any contact, but let's see, did he face guard him here? Did he run with purpose? Did he just, now right here, hey, eye on the ball, perfect call, perfect no call. Absolutely, you can't play it any better than Dwayne Davis from Columbus High School did right there. You, it's up to you. If your guy can nail the field goal from here, do what you want. Let's if he wants to get a little closer, run a draw. Let's go 99-99. Third and goal coming up from the 21. Field goal, Due to the ready. penalties, the two penalties, Long Island cannot pick up a first down without reaching the end zone, but they can get into better field goal range for Chris Lynch. Right now, it would be a 38-yarder. Wander had trouble with the snap. Throws it up there, and it's knocked down by Diego Okendo. Well, if he could do that again, Kenny, I think he thought it was fourth down. That was an interception in the making, and instead of knocking it down, instead of picking it, he knocked it down. So now you give Lynch a shot. Yeah, I don't know why Okendo did not try and catch that one. Well, they also do tell him, if you don't think you can get it, don't try. Hey, Steve, try to Steve. back down. So this will Steve. be a 38-yard attempt. No outside rusher! No if Lynch nails it, overtime will continue. If he misses, New York City will win for the first time in three years. Wadzer picks it up, rolling to his right. He's taken down, the game is over. New York City wins it. Long Island unable to get the kick away. New York City ends their two-year losing streak here at the Empire Challenge. Well, we've seen it all day in this game. In a lot of All-Star games, you see it. That was a low snap from center. Never had a chance to get the kickoff. Penalties cost Long Island during that final drive. They were at overtime. They had the ball on the seven. And then a couple of penalties. And now the players congratulating one another. They've all worked so hard. For the last couple of weeks in preparation, we take another look at the low snap. It could not be handled by Wanzer. Actually, my bad. It was a perfect snap right in Wanzer's hands, and he just dropped it. That was a perfect snap. And there's Jimmy Munson on the field. He's now one and two as an all-star coach, and that guy coaches, plays. He must have been a heck of a linebacker at Tottenville High School, one of the, just those tough Italian kids that just goes out there and makes plays. Looked like Munson wanted to try and block the field goal himself. <laughs> so New York City in overtime wins it by the score of 10 to seven. Much more to come. We'll return to Hofstra after these messages. Back here at James M. Stewart Stadium, welcome to the Cannon Post Game Show. 10-7, New York City in overtime, a boomer. Tremendous game once again. Very good game, congratulations to both teams. Congratulations to the New York City All-Stars for winning this year's event. And congratulations to the Long Island All-Stars for putting up a good fight. Couple plays here or there, man. That's just the way this game is played. And first thing we want to do is we want to award the Al Davis Coach of the Year awards to the head coaches representing each of these teams, Jim Munson and Russ Sellen. They will be on their way to Oakland to spend three days with the Oakland Raiders and Al Davis at their training camp and will spend the sideline, uh, the, the first game on the sideline with the Oakland Raiders. So, Jim and Russ, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Come on up, Russ. Jim, where are you? Here they are. There you go, guys. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you for a great game. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. Just one quick word, uh, Jim. You finally get an all-star win. How does it feel? Uh, Mike Quick told me uh, if I was Irish, they go in threes, and I was 0 and 2, so I was just glad that we got this one. It was a great, great football game. That Long Island team played hard as they could, and our guys played as hard as we could, and uh, we were very fortunate to bring the bring the win home. And Russ, you can't win every time, but uh, truly one heck of a game played by both teams. Uh, it was a great game by all the kids. Uh, the city team just played tremendously, and I'm proud of our guys, too. It was a great game. All right, congratulations to both. Congratulations, Boomer, guys. let's keep going. See you in a few minutes, Jim. Okay. We'll get you back up here. Okay. All right, now to present the Canon Player of the Game. It's presented by Deborah Epstein. She's the VP and GM of Corporate Communications for Canon USA. And to accept the Player of the Game, Will Barrow from Baldwin, wide receiver. Come on up, Will. Will had the one touchdown for the Long Island team tonight out of Baldwin High School going to Virginia to play lacrosse. 
Will, congratulations. There you go. There you go. Talk about the effort just quickly there, Will. I mean, I know you wanted to go out in your last game, come out as a winner, but uh, still well played in a well fought game. Well, yeah, it's an all star game. And we'd like to win, but we're here to have fun, and that's what we did. And pretty, pretty glad to win this award as a, on a losing effort. I'm sure you'll share that with your mom. You said uh, she had one dream, she wanted to see you score one last touchdown. You were able to do that tonight. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. you go, That's Will Barrow. Congratulations, and we still, as we move along, Boomer. Now for the Timothy M. O'Brien MVP Award. And here to help me present the uh, MVP Award is Bernie O'Brien, father of Timmy. Bernie, hi there. For those of you who don't know, Timmy was uh, a very dear friend of mine who we lost in the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. And we decided to name this uh, award after Timmy because he was one of the founding members of this game with me. And Bernie and his sons uh, have been here every year with us in that ticket booth, making sure that everybody pays. Right, Bernie? You got it. Bill. All right, good. Okay. So on behalf of Timmy O'Brien, his family, his father, we want to present the, today, tonight's MVP game to the MVP, Naheem Harris from Poly Prep, number 70. Where is Naheem? Come on up here. Big number 70's got a big piece of hardware. Bernie, why don't you make that presentation? On behalf of our son, I want to uh, congratulate you on a tremendous game tonight. Boomer, I want to thank you, the sponsors, your tremendous staff, and all the fans that came out, and especially all these players and coaches. Uh, you did a heck of a job. And congratulations and best wishes to you, and God bless. Thank you. Naheem, talk about it. Two years in a row, and all of a sudden, New York City says no more. Not this time, huh? Uh, <laughs> we just came out here, uh, play hard, great Long Island team, and uh, thank you. Congratulations. All right, Boomer's got some more, huh? Oh, yeah. A man of few words. Yeah, but he played big on the field. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you. Be careful stepping down. And finally, the trophy, the Outback Steakhouse trophy, is going to be presented by Ron Duckstein. He's the joint venture partner of Outback Steakhouse. And here to accept the trophy, head coach Jim Munson. Uh, where is he? Come on up, Jim. Congratulations for New York City. We're not going to fumble at this We're time. We're not going to fumble at this time. There you go. Be careful. Two pieces. All right, so what does this feel like right now? It feels real good. We had a, uh, a plan that we wanted to come out here and take this back home to New York City for all our football players and all our fans and all our families. And these guys kept believing that they would do it, and they did it. Guys, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's been an honor coaching you guys. I appreciate it. I had a great staff. Some of the best coaches in the city did a great job. Thank you, guys. And there it is in overtime, Boomer. 10-7, New York City over Long Island. Well, as always, it comes so quick, and it goes so quick. I hope everybody had a good time tonight. Thank you to all of our sponsors, everybody who came and bought a ticket tonight, to Ron Duckstein, Deborah Epstein, Cannon, Outback Steakhouse, the NFL, the Jets, of course, Black & Decker, Under Armour, Nike, and everybody who makes this thing go. Thank you to Carl. Enjoy the fireworks, everybody, and we'll see you next year. And we're not done. Mike Quick will wrap it up with Kenny Albert right after this timeout. Stay with us. My favorite. New York City ends their two-game losing streak in overtime. A 10-7 victory over Long Island. Mike Quick, the final statistics brought to you by Cannon. The big one, the change in turnovers. First half, New York turned it over three times. Second half, Long Island did. That's the difference in the ballgame. Long Island led the game 7-0 early in the second quarter. And then our play of the game, the final play from scrimmage of the first half. Anwar Isaacs going deep as time was running out in the first half. Suggs from Lehman High School pulls it in. That was the big touchdown to carry momentum into the second half. And then the game-winning field goal in overtime, kicked by New York City's Victor DiArrigo. So in overtime, the ninth annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge is won by the top senior high school football players from New York City over Long Island by the score of 10-7. to Thanks for tuning in for Mike Quick, Carl Reuter, Deb Kaufman, and our entire crew. This is Kenny Albert saying so long from James M. Stewart Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University. The all-time series now 4-3 Long Island. New York City the winner today in overtime, 10-7. We'll see you next year for the 10th annual Outback Steakhouse Empire Challenge.